This is Papa Smurf. You're listening to Our Lifestyle, the podcast with ODB and the mayor. Yo, this is Rob Maji, and you're listening to Our Lifestyle Podcast. Yo, 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 it's ODB from OLP. We're getting ready to roll into the episode. I want to thank our title sponsor. You're going to see if you're watching this via YouTube. You can see right on the screen here, we got Scraping the Coast. Of course, this annual event is every June. This year, it's June 21st, 22nd, 23rd in Biloxi. Please join us. It's one of the biggest, baddest truck shows you will ever attend. It's awesome because there's tons of stuff outdoor. But, oh, by the way, don't forget inside the Coliseum, you got the air conditioning, you've got food vendors, you've got usually some arts and crafts, but you have the big draw of the event is all of the awesome cars, trucks, motorcycles, and more inside the Coliseum. We hope to see you out there at Scraping the Coast. Don't forget this show was voted into the Mini Truck Hall of Fame, and it is a uh, an event you do not want to miss. So stay on the rise, everyone, and enjoy this episode. Yo, 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 it's on the Lifestyle Podcast, episode 355. Three, 355? Five. Mike, I got something for you, though. Uh-oh. With so much drama with OLP, it's kind of hard being O to the dz BZ, but I somehow, some wheezy, keep coming up with funky ass, you know what, like every single DZ. May I kick a little something for the Gs and make a few Ns as I breeze through two in the morning and the party's still jumping because my mom I ain't home. I got biz itches in the living room getting it on. They ain't leaving till six in the morning. Last thing, Mike. So what you going to do, shiz it. I got a pocket full of rubbers, and my homeboys do too. What do you think he meant when he said pocket full of rubbers? Like, do you think he meant rubber bands? Is well, that... I thought for sure it was rubber bands because don't he have to put the rubber bands around his back? The money, right like this, yeah. dude. Yeah. Back in them, man, like that. that that's Listen, what I was thinking. If you're checking us out right now via any podcast app, follow us on YouTube because you're going to have more of an immersive experience. You can, we would ask that you finish listening here, however you're listening, but go over and stream it through YouTube as well. Again, you're going to get the immersive experience. You're going to get to see Mike Murray. Mike, you're on, is it like Jenny Craig or something? Uh, Jenny Craig. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Jenny Craig. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I mean this in a professional way, like a friend way. You're looking good, man. You're looking good. I know you've been I was focused waiting for you to on no homo. Re, re, no, see, I can't because there's you know the Seinfeld episode. Not that there's anything wrong with that. The the I know you've been reducing the sugar intake and things like that, but it looks like it's paying off. I know you've had some other personal things kind of going on. I want to get to that, but but you are looking good, man. Hey, I appreciate that, man. I really do. Um, I am down some weight, but at the same time. Dude, life is good, and uh, I'm just looking forward, man. It's been a while since I've been on here with you. I missed you. I missed the Airhead Nation, and uh, ready to chop it up with you, brother. This episode, uh, we're going to talk about just a second who's going to be on. Many of you have seen the cover art now, but I also want to say thanks for those that listened to the episode 354, Rad Day. One thing I'll say is don't judge one of our podcast episodes by the title. There's a lot of good nuggets out there. We just don't talk about Rad. Uh, I I talked to Bill Allen about uh, his best friend, which was Bruce Lee's son, Brandon Lee, you know, being on Family Ties with Michael J. Fox and a few other things. So, again, just because you might see an episode and go, yo, man, I know ODB loves that Rad movie. It just isn't all Rad. There's a lot more to talk about. But, Mike, on this episode, a long-requested guest, even by the big homie Phil Fowler, we have Matt Hodgson on. Matt is a great guy, and I'm super excited for people to hear. I mean, it's a it's a cool interview. It's a video interview. And, Mike, he's a good dude, you know, in the Northeast. He had the Colorado, I won't give it all away, that uh, was featured on the cover of a magazine. And there's a lot to talk about there. He's a good dude. Bro, I just talked to Hey, dude, uh, hey Guy today. And uh, Hey Guy sent me a message on something that, uh, yeah, the big... Elbow, Tom ropes. our boy Randy, uh, savage, and uh, and he busted out. He sent me a text message with actually was something that uh, Matt actually made, and I'm sure everybody's already seen it though. The 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 um, the thing that he made for um, for Mini Nats, the auction at Mini Nats, and uh, Randy was pretty excited about it because uh, 
it's uh, it's got something to do with Randy. I know it's going to be awesome, and they're going to get a chance to see it. I recorded with Matt shortly after it, that was announced. Oh, okay. So he, he will show it in these audio. So that's a good kind of teaser. Hey, I won't say a word. Uh, we want to thank our title sponsor that you always hear at the top, Scraping the Coast, every June. I think this is technically the 21st annual. Of course, that show was thrust out of just an era when there were a ton of uh, hurricanes, including Katrina, and that early 2000 era. Rest in peace to our friend Greg Miller. But we'll be out there the 21st, 22nd, 23rd of June in Biloxi. And, Mike, we also got to reinforce, this is the way I'm remembering it. Three months later, almost to the day, is uh, three months later is obviously June. Two plus three is September. And you know one of your favorite shows out there. I didn't get a chance to go last year. The freaking with an I-N weekend. Mm-hmm. You know Papa Smurf was here, rest in peace. He would want to be out there dancing with some of the ladies, man. Bro, the Saturday night. Saturday night after party is off the chain at the, the, at the I'm sorry the Saturday night pool party there at uh, the at the host hotel is off the chain bro it is off the chain we had a blast last year now I told trip to this I told trip this we saw trip at Lone Star Throwdown and he is obviously says yo I want to partner with OLP we said hey we'll, we'll, we'll re- really reinforce your awesome event but think about this Mike he was walking around remember the big hat I saw it on oh, Shark I remember. Tank. He was in the truck, and I told myself, I'm going to get a lot of streams on this uh, reel, a lot of views. And last I checked, it was like eighty or 90,000, and I think it was because of the freak. Now, the Mitsubishi Mighty Max I loved, but I do think it had to do with the hat as well, Mike. Let's just, let's just call it what it is. Well, see, Trip thinks, this is what he thinks when he wears that big hat. It thinks that people will think that he's got a big brain, so ah. that's why he's got to wear such a big hat. Straight but- off the dome, Trip. Yeah, but uh, it's the freaking weekend. We'll be out there. But the only reason we're reinforcing again, scraping the coast is going to be in June and then plus three months that same weekend, kind of the same city, right? Biloxi. But this is the good thing. Those shows get along. There's no beef. There's two different kind of two different events, you know, and that's the cool thing. And we love Biloxi, love Mississippi, and we'll be out there for both of those. Now, Mike, the next topic that I want to hit upon is. Uh, you know, breaking news. So two things. One thing I should have shared several weeks back. I don't know if you saw this, but Snoop and Dre finally, with the minds, uh, with the mindset of Jimmy IV and I think helping. Why did it take so long, Mike? The reason why I started with some gin and juice, right? Talking about, you know, I got a pocket full of rubber bands, and the big homies do too. Um, gin and juice. Why did it take Snoop and Dre so long to come out with their own drink with low riders on them, Impalas? And they call it gin and juice, dude. What an idea. You think? That's because they like sat back one day and was like, man, you know how much money we can make? Let's bring out our own gin and juice, bro. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I remember when 50 Cent started the vitamin water. Yes. And if I remember correctly, there was a NASCAR guy that was in on that uh, with Money Wise, one of the drivers. And I'd have to look it up. But if I remember correctly, when they sold that to Coca-Cola... And they spun it into, it was called Formula 50 then. And they spun that. Dude, it was some crazy deal then. So, you know, Dre obviously became a billionaire to a certain extent with the headphones. And now everybody's kind of doing their own energy drink. So I thought that was kind of cool. But, Mike, the main topic that I want to hit upon today is earlier today, for good or bad, I mean, obviously you could spin this in a negative way. I think the good is it's, it's conversation around the truck scene. But there was a very hot topic today in the mini truck, uh, mini truck and syndicate Facebook group, our Facebook group. Now, um, I know people tend to get very passionate about things, and I'm passionate about the truck scene. But I have kind of, Mike, I have this unique ability to remove the emotion from the thought process or comment, you know, or, or, or mindset that I have. Now I know sometimes when Mike are on the phone, Mike and I, he probably thinks I'm going crazy because I do run things by him and he'll say, yo man, I wouldn't say it like that, dude. You know, that's the, that's the old ODB. But Mike, I wanted to kind of get some of your thoughts before I, you, maybe I share a few of mine, like today with this hot topic of, you know, someone posts a screenshot anonymously in a Facebook group. You know, it's from the past, 
and you and I both know, you know, there there has been some rumblings of, you know, do many truckers really go out and buy these magazines and things like that? I don't know. Do you have any comments on it? I mean, you, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. If you don't want to comment on it, I totally get it. No, I mean, it's real simple. You want to support something, support it. If you don't want to support it, don't support it. And at the end of the day, we got this magazine that, well, you know what? All right, so street trucks, they put a, a, a mini truck on the cover, okay? Genuine. They claim they claim it doesn't do well. I don't know if I'd necessarily believe it. I don't know if I'd necessarily believe the fact that they really pushed it as much either. But, hey, here it is what it is at this point. But at the end of the day, people are going to support people that they feel like they're doing it and and they're really in for it for the right reasons. And they can sit there and do the blame game all they want. But if you're really not in, in, in it for the right reasons or you're not really – you don't really – there's no love behind behind it. You're just doing it to do it. Then I don't think people are going to support that anyway. And they know that there's no love behind it. They know that, hey, they're just putting it on there just to put it on there to prove a point or not prove a point or whatever. And it's, it's almost like, you know, it's like, oh, we're going to do this, so you better go out and support it or we'll never do it again. Nobody's going to go out and do it if, you, if, if it's like that. They want to get something – they want to get – many truckers want to get behind something that they know the people that are behind it are, are real, are true mini truckers that are true – to the bone that they go to these shows, they support these shows, they support the the mini trucks, they support the scene. And if they don't feel that love, they're not going to get behind it and support it. I mean, hey, head, hats off and congrats to Randy for getting cover and, and what they did, and Brandon for shooting it. And uh, you know, hats off to those guys. It was it was it was awesome. It was cool that they recreated what they recreated. And uh, but at the end of the day, I don't think there was any any lo- true love. From, you know, from everybody else, uh, you know, there besides Brandon and, and of course, Randy is Randy's truck. And I think people knew that and they're not going to get behind that and support that. So now we got mini truck and magazine out. So now I feel like these mini truckers are going to go out and they're going to support a magazine that actually gets gets out there is is produced. It's it's produced right. And it's been it's actually consistently put out there and not, hey, here's my money. Where's my magazine? I don't think we're going to have that problem. We have a good a good group of guys, a good team that they have um, developed. And, um, and these guys are all in the scene. They're at show. We see them at shows all the time. And I think he's got a really good team. And I think this is really going to be a really good thing. People are going to see that and they're going to support it. And now I've seen someone make a comment. Oh, well, there's only, you know, f- uh, 2000 subscriptions. Dude, this is 2000 subscriptions to a magazine that hasn't even hasn't even got out there yet. Nobody's even seen it yet. I'd say 2000 subscriptions for something that nobody's even seen is pretty damn good. And so I think that's just the just the start of it. That's just the tip of the iceberg. And I think once they see it, which I do believe if I'm not mistaken, the first one is going to be at Mini Nats. Mini Nats this year is going to be freaking phenomenal and I'm bouncing around a little bit. But back to mini trucking, I think I'm more than pretty sure the first magazine is going to be um, uh, there at mini truck um, and that's and um, I believe it's Friday, if I'm not mistaken, or Saturday on stage. They're going to have the question and answer deal. And I think there's going to be a bunch of people out there supporting it, watching it, asking questions. Why are you pointing up? What did I do? No, I just wanted to tell you my buddy Craig Bray loves my tailgate poster. Never mind. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. My bad. Are, what? People are commenting and stuff? No, 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 not right now, but Craig Bray does love that poster. Oh, okay, I okay. Hey, I like that. I like that poster too. Um, and and so I think really mini trucking after mini nats, mini trucking magazine is really gonna launch and really gonna take off and people are gonna get behind it because they know it's the real deal, holy field. I stole that from you, brother. And uh so hey, street trucks, it is what it is. I think that's a thing in the past. And but hey, if you want to support street trucks, go support street trucks. We're not here to tell you who to support, who not to support. And you know it is what it is. Um, but obviously, if you want magazines to be around, you have to go out and subscribe, and you have to go out and you have to buy. And uh, I just don't. I just know that the people that are behind mini trucking are behind it, and they're they're in it for the right reasons. They're in it to put out a good product and to be able to give the support of the vehicles that are going to be in it, the support of the scene, support of the shows. And it's just going to be one big, um, one big happy family after it's all said and done. 
yeah, well said. My take is you could obviously, you know, we can see Chris Hamilton screen. Someone had posted the screenshot in the mini trucking syndicate page. And listen, we all can have a bad day, you know, especially like if you think about a business, if you've got a business and, you know, let's say some numbers come in for that month or that week or that, that year, and they're not good. I can see where people get frustrated a hundred percent straight up and down. So let's just call it a bad day. You know, whatever issue they were talking about at that point. Now let's remember, I think this screenshot, Mike was from over a year ago. Um, so I want to just clear that cause I'm just trying to stick to the facts. There's no secret. There has been comments, I think from some people that have kind of, you know, reinforced that, that many trucks on the cover of that publication don't seem to sell well. Now, again, Mike, you said it best a minute ago. We don't know that. We don't have the numbers. We're not privy to that. To that. When, if you check out my Substack, if you Google ODB's life, you'll land on my Substack, and I kind of talk about when street trucks started. It the the tagline was the all encompassing custom truck publication, and the big thing about it was you had three key guys, rest in peace. Courtney, rest in peace, Steve Stillwell, then you had Brian McCormick, and each of them had a laser focus on what they liked, so there was a good mix of it. And here's my mindset, Mike. You know, when we started this podcast, or if you start a business, or you start a show, you you and I both know, Mike, you and John have a successful show with the wives, right? You guys are, are grinding all the time. But it's one thing to have a successful show, but it's another thing to go, hey, everyone pre-register. You know, how easy is it to get someone to put their credit card in or to say, hey, I'm going to come to your event, right? It takes that hustle and grind. And my thing is, if you look at the, you know, kind of the tides out there, right? If someone, if someone doesn't like a product, it's going to maybe take someone a while to come back around, right? To your point, you know, maybe if, if, if people haven't liked the product, I don't know what the numbers are. You're maybe going to have people onesie twosies buying them. But at the same time, in my opinion is if, like, let's say BlackBerry, for instance, when they had their epic downfall, if they were to come and they kind of did this, they finally come at the end and they go, hey, here's a phone that has a glass screen and, you know, it's this and that. It, it was just too, it was too little too late. Now, do I think so many trucks like Billy Bob's on the cover probably did well? Yeah, it's a very unique NL320. Absolutely. But the other piece, you know, I don't want to get too crazy here, but if you think about the other piece of it is when I worked at, in the cellular world for so long, one of the key things we would talk about is the D word, not what you're thinking, Mike, mm-hmm. distribution, okay? And when you think of distribution, whether you're selling a cell phone or a magazine or your clothing, right, the more distribution points you have, a fact, the more your product's going to sell. You're going to walk in the store and go, oh, look at those Nikes. I want those, right? Or I want that. When the resounding thing that we have heard, Mike, is I have not seen a truck magazine on a newsstand in X amount of time. Now, I can tell you this. There are a few places around me I can find the builder guides. Publix used to religiously have street trucks, and they have not. That, to me, is a key thing. And again, I'm not calling anyone out. I don't even know if they're going to hear this. They probably won't. But if they do, again, this isn't to call anybody out. I want all magazines to be successful. But all I can tell you is that if you put out a product that over the course of time, people have thought that maybe it's been there's been a downward trend, you can't just expect to put out one issue and then everybody's going to run out and get it. Now, do I think the ballistic issue was insane and I loved it? Absolutely. I have several of them and I'm thankful for that happening. I think Brandon did a great job. This new issue that they released today is going to be insane. Pascal should have got the credit 10 years ago, but he was very clear. I don't think he even really wanted to be featured for the most part back then. I think that's his take on it. But, you know, the way I see it, Mike, is... You know, to me, no editor should disparage an entire sector or genre of a car or truck community unless they're doing something destructive. You know, if we think about street takeovers and stuff, you know, that could be deemed the cancer of, you know, said automotive culture, right? Potentially, right? But I just think that companies have to be able to pivot and move, Mike. And you think about BlackBerry. There's a quote from years ago when the BlackBerry executives laughed and said this. Not exact quote. 
they said no one is going to want a camera in a phone. Okay. Mm. So if you think about, and again, I think Street Trucks has done a great job with Motortopia and everything they're growing there. But you and I both know, Mike, if you rest on your laurels and you just say, hey, we have a print magazine. Some of us love these magazines because we grew up in that era. But I can tell you this. Most people do not want the effing clutter. Okay. Do I think mini truck is going to be great? Absolutely. I do because I think it, you know, those two terms together, it's bringing back the N word, which is nostalgia. When you look at that magazine or it has such a laser focus on what you love, all of these kind of trucks, I think it's going to be successful. But my last thought right now is this. I do believe, you know, in the past we've seen all time low, we've seen common treads. We have our friends over at local rides mag. Okay. Let's not forget them. They're putting out a great product. It's easier, in my opinion, Mike, for these homegrown magazines and kind of what Logan and team are doing because you may not have the overhead that you have. And if you have to think about these, these magazines are corporations and they're having to feed the families, right? They're having to bring in this money from these advertisers. A lot of what you're going to see from mini trucking, I don't want to speak for Logan, but I know what Mike Alexander did was slammed. A lot of it is homegrown, Mike. It's you're doing it as a passion project. Your friends are, 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 you know, they're, they're getting their name out there and they kind of like to do it. But at the end of the day, if nobody's getting paid, that takes a lot of stress off of being able to produce something. So again, I'm not taking sides. I want mini trucking to be successful. I've got my, my, uh, subscription in and I want street trucks to be successful, but we'll have to see where it lands. Mike. Hey, always Jay, always nailed it. Always well said. <clears throat> very good with the way that you uh you you talk and you you present yourself and uh hey like you said you want both and that's why i'm telling people we don't want people we're not going to tell you what to do what not what to do you do what you feel is right you support who you want to support and uh but at the end of the day if you don't support a magazine they're not going to be around so oh, yeah did you see recently and i don't i haven't kept up with a lot of it i listened to this one sports podcast that breaks down the business side of sports and you've heard some rumblings, right? I think ESPN might even have a new guy in there. And that's, of course, under that Disney court, Mike. But you're a big sports fan. Disney's trying to, or ESPN, they're trying to figure out, right? We, You and I both know live sports is huge, right? Netflix is trying to get into it. There's a lot going on there in that space. Even Apple, right, with the soccer stuff. Love it or hate it, soccer's the biggest sport in the world. But if you think about, Mike, you have to be able to navigate the, water, or the waters of business and uh, ESPN, as much as I love it and we watch it, they're probably at a standstill because how do you get your sports scores all, all sports scores all the time, Mike? You know, we we've all got these little mini computers in our phone, so I think a lot of companies are having to figure it out, and I really think the magazine companies are are, are trying to get ahead of it now, going, hey, let's put out more digital content and stuff. But if that doesn't trans- translate to dollars, it may not translate to keeping the lights on. I don't know. But like you said, I'll sum it up. You just said it. I appreciate the good word. Support who you want to support. We can sit there all day and tell you uh, who's better. You're going to go out. You, you know, my dad used to say, vote with your wallet. And that's what we all do. If you go support a product, whether it's OLP or mini trucking, you're voting with your wallet because you're going out and saying, hey, I'm going to give my 25 bucks or I'm going to buy this shirt. I like the cons. And going back to what Mike was saying earlier, I think that's it. That's what I got from Mike's thing is you are, you, you all, the, the ladies and the guys are listening to this. You're the army behind it, you know, and it's where your little bit of hard earned money is going to go. That's going to help the future of potentially the truck scene. So I don't know. I think that's it, Mike. The- hey, like I said earlier, man, I'm just excited. I can't wait for mini nats, bro. We are what? Two and a half weeks away. And we got a new shirt. We got a new product dropping. And I can't wait, brother. I'm excited. Um, we, we got our friends. I don't even know if we've talked about this yet. We're going to have our friends from Twin States joining us at our OLP booth. And uh, I, we, I, we got the okay. We got the, 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 the thumbs up. Uh, we're coming out. They're bringing out the, the trailer. And, uh, and we're going to have a whole new setup there at, uh, at Mini Nats. And I'm pretty damn excited about it. Yeah, and they may have a surprise that we're super excited to share with you guys. Uh, the breaking news, I want to thank AccuWare for the continued support. They support Eastbound Get Down. 
We love what Max and team are doing over there at AccuAir. If you want the best in air management, arguably, you can go to ACCUAir, AccuAir.com. We appreciate them. But, Mike, speaking of mini Nats, when you think about Twin States coming out to party with us, again, we've got some more things we're going to tease you on the next episode. Hopefully, we'll get Jay Bell to sit down with us next ep because we want him to talk a little bit about what's going down. I wish you wouldn't have reminded me that it was a couple weeks away. I've got a few things to do. (laughs) I I feel good saying I don't have a lot of things to do because I did a lot of prep for Lone Star Throwdown, Mm -hmm. which is one of our favorite shows. But mini Nats, Mike, we're hearing Lucky's coming from Canada. There's a ton of people coming from Canada. I think the big homie Dale's coming. You got the West Coast. You know, Bobby Boucher is going to be out there repping DTE. I want to get a photo of at least one person from every state there. Okay. And Mike, if you had to guess, because we don't know, there's how many states are there, Mike? Um, I believe there's 49. Oh, man. You are really. Wait, did you, you went to wait. Ruskin High? Yeah, I went to Ruskin, yeah. Okay. And yeah, that was high. You're close. 5-0, right? Close. Oh, I, I my know bad. You're hey. Don't forget Alaska was, or no, Hawaii. It was Alaska Hawaii. and Hawaii. Come on, it was Hawaii. H-A-W-A-I-I. You know what I'm saying? Uh-uh. But, but don't, um, don't forget. Well, here, okay, here, let me get back to my thought. I want to have at least one person. We did this We did this photo one time. We had each corner of the country. We had like California, yep. Washington, Maine, and then uh, Dan from Maine, and then we had Florida. This time, I want to get his one, at least one, maybe more, from each state. How many states do you think are going to represent there if we had to count them out? Off the top of my head, I'm going to say 31. 31, okay. I'm going to go 27. Ooh, one, okay. One dollar, Bob. One dollar. <laughs> one dollar. But that's how cool it is. We at least know two countries, the U.S. of A., and the, hey. how do you say the uh, hockey country? A A. Hey, do the, you the, remember Chris from Germany? Yes, dude. Yeah. He came and seen me at freaking OBI. Dude, he the guy is. He was actually in Naples too, and and I he didn't know I lived in Naples, and I'm like, bro, we could have went into the damn. They went and rode the damn um, airboats out in, in in the Everglades, dude, and I was dude. like. You're right down the road from my house. Tell me you wouldn't have showed them that sport. You guys started that time hydro sliding, kneeboarding behind an airboat through the Everglades. That's well, of course. Remember the yeah. gator jumped up? Yeah, yeah. No, I would have made him do it just so we felt like he really belonged in the Everglades. <laughs> Listen, here's something you have to do when you're at Mini Nats. I okay. don't know the exact date and time that the merch booth is going to open for Southeast Mini Truck and Nationals, one of our favorite shows, as Mike said. Friday. But you- you got to get there in line if you want a shirt, these metal signs, all the cool stuff that Jay Bell's bringing. He's got special edition stuff. Mike, we told Jay Bell, save some for the rest of us, dog. Bro, he brought out the damn um, the damn uh, flannels this year, too, bro. I was like, damn, son. Dude, he's, yes. you know, Eddie Gordy's over here getting his drive shaft chromed. I think Jay Bell's chroming his drive shafts on his damn trailer, dude. Dude, he, 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 I think he's selling chrome uh, drive shafts this year <laughs> at, at the at the mini truck and booth. I, so. I need one of those. No, Mike does. <laughs> Mike does right there, that guy. But uh, Southeast Mini Truck and Nationals, again, the third weekend in the, uh, April. If you want to get up there early, uh, I know a low bros, uh, the Fatty B, they usually go up early. Phil Fowler. Scotty I don't know the if Body is going to be up there early. Yeah, Phil Fowler, Scotty the Body, they're trying to make it like a weak deal. Yep. And and I said, come on, man. I said, Scott, dude, don't be rubbing it in, bro. You got all this money, going to all these shows. Yep. You know, yep. her, him and Jenna Lise winning all these trophies. Yep. Dude, how do you feel, Mike? They're taking all your trophies, man. Hey, bro, that's what that's what uh, NC stands for, high class, bro. <laughs> yeah. You mother effer. <laughs> hey, speaking of clubs. Clubs. There's a guy... In, Ted a club up. Wait, Ted a club not, up. Oh. Not, yeah, exactly. I'm ducking clubs like Tiger Woods. Um, what? There's a guy, not Little Rock. It's a place where we went and it has all the sand. Uh, salt, Utah? Salt, salt, salt something. He got, did the salt guy Lake, from Utah? Yeah, did that guy from that state get patched in a gang or no? Uh, that guy did get patched into a gang. Yeah. Yeah. And he's yeah. got he, he's got his, vet, his riding vest now? Yeah, yeah, he got a riding vest. He's got his patch. He got one patch put on. Now you know him because you used to live in the same state. Tell us what happened. Uh, he moved. 
Yep, but he got patched in to... Oh, a, Aftermath! A, a Florida oh, I was following what the hell you were talking about, dog. Hey, I got, I got, I got, got a pocket full of rubbers and my homeboys do, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, our boy Graham, man. He, he got the... He got the A. He got the A. A. Yep. Well, congrats to Graham. Yes, His show is every May, and we want to make sure we talk about that as we kind of progress through this month. Because speaking Rolling of Scotty the, the, Scotty the Body and Jenna Lee, they're going all the way to uh, roll in the Red Rocks. Next year. Not this year, but next year. Oh, that's right. Next yes, year. Yes, because they're going to go see DJ Mays this year, relaxing in the, ran- uh, relaxing in the uh, park. And then next year... There's a big group of guys that are rolling out to rolling in the Red Rock from Florida. Dude, crazy. Yes. yes, yes. I'm hoping to be one of them. Oh, yeah. The general updates is brought to you by our kinfolk at Lone Star Throwdown. You must be sleeping under a rock. If you don't know what LST is, join us next year in Conroe, Texas. LoneStarThrowdown.com for more. Always the third weekend in the month of February. Don't forget... They're also going to do the pre-reg usually on August 1st. We'll have more information coming. Good people. You're going to need to get in. I think it was less than 72 hours this year. It's truly, uh, I would argue, the best truck show in the scene. Not just mini trucks, not just full sizes, not just classics. They got a little bit of everything. And if you're just a classic guy or lady, don't forget the weekend before July 4th, is same bat time. Well, not same bat time, but same bat location. Yep. They're in Conroe. Uh, they're going to have classic truck throw down. Yes, yes. And hey, Jay, this time I booked our our hotel early, so we got the one right down the street. So we're good. Hotel, motel, Holiday Inn. And I told anybody if they want me to come dressed in fatigues, and basically watch out and and help in any way, I will, dude. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, it's getting serious, huh? Yep. Oh, okay. okay. It, it, we got to do what we got to do. Mike, I got one question for you. Are you ready? I'm always ready, Jay. To get it wrong? To get it wrong. <laughs> here's 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 the two-part question. You just have to tell us the year and month if you know. If you get oh, the year. Jesus. You know I'm going to be fucking wrong then. Listen, if you get the year, we'll give you a t- half a tick. If you get the <sighs> month. Okay. So, number one, what was the year or season? And so the year, the year and month, but in this case, season, the year that mini truck and magazine came out. And do you oh, remember, my. do you remember what season or what month? Well, it came out. Yeah. The first, the first issue of mini truck and magazine. Oh my God. See, this is where I should have been paying attention to all your. Your mini truck and flip throughs, bro. Dude, and, you're, you're, no, you're good. We're not. We're not holding anything against you. I mean, now no, listen. No, no. Okay, we've well, got I know, to, it, it's, I know it stopped in in May of 2014. Okay, okay. that I do know. So I'm gonna say, yep. was it uh, 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 May of, of 1994? Close. It was the summer of '88. Oh shit! Not the summer of '69, but okay. But but you get. I mean, we'll have to give you half a tick, a quarter of a tick. Hey, I remember when it stops. I remember when it stops. Okay, so here's the second part: Uh-oh. Street Trucks Magazine. What Uh-oh. year and what month? Because this this is an this is a this is a um, for street trucks. This is a milestone year for. Them. Isn't this the 25th year? Got that? Got that, dude? Got that? Okay, okay. Do you so remember this, what month? Oh, Jesus. Uh, it would be a c- complete, complete, absolute guess. Right it was in June. Close, close. But I'm going to give you a tick mark. Here's why. It came out in <laughs> August, okay? But I'm going to have more information coming from you for everyone. It technically went on sale in June of 99, if you could find it. So I'm going to talk later this year about the date. And kind of some of the behind the scenes stuff that you guys have never seen, I guarantee it. So that's going to be coming, Mike. A little, sne- Mike. We got to kind of, you know, do a little bit of, you know, sneak peeky. Sprinkle. Yep. The trivia with Mike's brought to you by our kinfolk at Southeast Money Truck and Nationals, aka Mini Nats. We'll see you in two and a half to three weeks there in Maggie Valley, North Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, we're going to keep this one short. The scene updates. Um, listen, this past weekend, I might try to get with Joey. Um, Whitby, he was out at one of these events, but here's what you had. You had Altered Metal. 
Yep. You had Terminal Takeover. Yep. You had Orange Beach Invasion. Yep. You had Forbidden Fantasy. And I think we had Foot yep. Soldiers at all of them, including yep. you were at OBI. Did you have a good time? Bro, we always do. We had 63 Aftermath members at OBI, bro. Members was, or trucks? Uh, no, no, no. We had 42 trucks and 63 members. Look at Mike pulling the numbers out. Yes, 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 yes. So that, a, that's that's pretty yeah, cool. Uh, I did get a time. confirmation text from Joey that we could talk about Forbidden, so I'll talk with him a few minutes. Joey was our boots on the ground there. He sent me a bunch of videos. Congrats to Brian and team. Uh, I know Frank's obviously part of the club there as well with uh, Forbidden Fantasy. Yep. The show and shine returned to the Avi mic, and it looked like, you know, for Chad Luke to Galavan all the way across the country, yep. only to be beat out probably long distance. Mike, at this point, look, I'm just going to be honest, dude. I told Scott the other day, Mike needs to sell a Smazda. You see yep. it right there. Dude, remember the How guys I've been telling you about for a long time that are coming for you? Dude, Zach Dude, came out, bro. Yes, yes. He was like Mike Tyson going at Jake Paul, your boy. Yes. Right? <laughs> and tell me he just did not obliterate MFers, dude. Dude, that front end on that truck is insane. Absolutely insane. I mean, the truck is beautiful top to bottom. Uh, it's, but that, that front end is, it's, it's crazy. It's sick, bro. Absolutely. Well, sick. Scott and I got a secret weapon for you, bro. Oh, you, you ready weapon. for it? Okay. Let's hear it. Keeping this in mind. Okay. I okay. know we've been talking about Lambos for a while. This is one thing you're not going to see on Zach's truck that okay. we think you could do. Okay. I'm not a Tesla fan, but if you go to the store, they're going to talk to you all about the Falcon doors <laughs> on their one deal, dude. <laughs> If you could somehow have a button that you hit, uh, dude, Zach is going to fall out of his chair. And, dude, you may not even have to detail the undercarriage, dude. I'm just saying. Oh, my God. But but uh, seriously, Zach, tip of the cap, hey, salute. Zach's on a whole nother level, brother. Whole nother level. I think well, it's absolutely beautiful. We got to get Zach on. Hopefully, he'll come on. Um, my understanding is that he learned to do a lot of that. And, my, I mean, I have not talked to him firsthand, so this is kind of hearsay. My understanding is he did uh, much like Jasmine did in Down Under, where she learned to sew and do all this stuff. And I think that he 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 did that truck himself. My understanding, we'll get more information from him. But if that's not in the running for the 2024 OLP Truck of the Year, man, I don't know what is, dude, tip of the cap. But listen, Chad Luke's truck, he comes out firing with um, some updated paint. There's a couple of Tacomas there that go hard. There's a ton of rock. You know, Severed was there going hard. So it was really cool, Mike, to see. Like, if you think about four shows, Scotty the Body, Jenna Lee's were at Terminal Takeover. They had a blast. I think the rain kind of held out from what I understood. Yep. So, I mean, there's there's something for everyone out there. Dude, Glenn and, Glenn and Dizzy, uh, apparently the first show absolutely nailed it. And uh, look forward to going out and supporting those homies uh, next year. Oh, yeah. So really, the only other show I want to reinforce, which we already did, is Mini Nats. Again, uh, by the time you hear this, we're going to be about a couple weeks out. If for whatever reason you cannot make it, uh, we highly suggest on Instagram, tap on Mini Nats, that hashtag, and you can click the plus. When you do that, it's going to curate a lot of those posts into your feed. That way, when we're posting content from there, you'll get a chance to see it when others are as well. I use a couple of hashtags, Mini Truck and Nats. And mini nats. Those are the two that you want to follow. Huge shout out to all of the show promoters that work their butts off to put these events on. I know it's not easy. And it's one of those things where we can talk to you about the shows. You're only going to be able to make what you can make. So hopefully you guys are uh, able to make what, what, what you can. Uh, the scene updates is brought to you by our kinfolk at Garage Gear Clothing. GarageGearClothing.com. Mike, they have free shipping on over $100 orders now. Bro, that's and you know what? But that's only in the good old US of A. Yep, exactly. And there's 50 states, but I think that might only be in the, what do they call it? The lo the lower 48? <laughs> the lower? Lower, lower the dynamite. Yes, yes, yes. Brought to you yes. by Garage Gear Clothing. Okay, Mike, uh, we're going to wrap this thing up. ODB live and uncut. I just want to tell everyone, again, thanks for the continued support. Please check us out on YouTube. Um, 
I really want YouTube, as I've said before in some of my videos, I want it to be kind of where everything is is housed, whether it be the podcast, videos, all of these magazines I'm flipping through. I certainly appreciate all the support. ODB Live and Uncut brought to you by our kinfolk at Colorado Custom Wheels. It's Colorado Custom with no S dot com. Hit up Michael and team if you need a billet steering wheel, maybe a rear view mirror, and of course, wheels. They're bread and butter. Uh, ColoradoCustom.com. Thanks for all the support. Uh, they've been showing a lot of love. Only the best. Mike, our homie Bill at at, at uh, Local Rides with the Z Mag, they have been out there hustling. And I tell you what, Bill is a nice guy. I know you know Bill pretty well. Yep. You see him at shows. Just and the thing. The, the Eastbound Get Down coverage. Yep, he did. And and that's what I want to tell people. You know, as, as much as there's the bigger magazines out there, there are people out there busting their butts. And if you go to local rides with a Z, you can buy individual issues. They're about eight or nine bucks a piece. Show some love. Local rides with a Z magazine. You know, that's kind of the mini truck and syndicate updates. I didn't have a lot to share because we talked about so much there. Um, I do want to say the podcast updates. Mike mentioned it. The the twin state Mazdas, the twin state Mazda that I'm calling reincarnation. Mike, we got the little uh, proofs for the stickers in the banner. It's going to be fire, dude, at Mini Nats. Yes, yes, definitely look forward to it, man. I can't wait. And um, no, I just look forward to just seeing everybody again, man. We uh, we uh, we were at OBI. Not not many mini truckers there at OBI. Which hey, it is what it is. Um, uh, but mini Nats is where, where the magic happens, baby. And, uh, that's the show of all shows, uh, mini trucker wise. And, uh, I just look forward to seeing everybody there. Yeah. If you're on Spotify or you're on Apple podcast, uh, leave a five-star rating. If you can, uh, write a review, please do that. We really appreciate it. You know, closing words. I just want to say, we're going to continue like, you know, this episode I'm looking right now, we're like at 40 minutes in. Mike hadn't had a chance. We hadn't had a chance to link up, but we are going to try to keep things lighter as we go. You're seeing a little bit of that, but I think you're really going to enjoy the interview with Matt Hodgson. He's a great guy. I am also going to try to link up for a few minutes with Joey Whitby to talk about Forbidden Fantasy, Show and Shine. Mike, I think that's it. Eastbound Get Down, when does the pre-reg? Uh, dude, we don't do pre-reg until uh, good old uh, Labor Day weekend, my man. Well, speaking of that, next month... In May, we forgot to give a shout out to DJ Mays, who's always on Twitch. Yes. DJ Mays Radio, you're going to be going to St. Louis, right, for the first time, and their pre reg is open, but I think their date recently closed where you could like uh, reserve a shirt and stuff. Yes, that is correct, and I'm actually going to be going to Made of Steel uh, this year. Okay, um, I'm not going to go to uh, relaxing in the uh, relaxing in the park. Uh, I went. I was out there last year. And, Dang, um, Antoine flies. Yes, yes, and it rained, so I'm not allowed to go back. I have to at least skip a That's year. That's right. Yeah, because yeah, you were a bad omen or something. Yeah. Just, just remember, relaxing in the park. It's cars, bikes, and trucks, and it's in Festus. So I always think Festus. of like, yep. you think of Seinfeld, Festivus for the rest of us. This is in Festus, F E T F E S T U S, Missouri, and it's May seventeenth uh, through the nineteenth. It's for free. If you want to follow DJ Mays on DJ Mays Radio, you can follow him for free. Download Twitch and search DJ Mays, M-A-Z-E. He'll have more information coming. He's the big homie, Mike, and he's a good dude. Oh, he's a fucking awesome guy, man. And don't forget about Mini Trucking Tuesdays. Mini Trucking Tuesdays on uh, on Twitch with DJ, with DJ Mays. And, yep. uh, and I know uh, DJ Mays, I'll be joining him, and uh, we'll be hitting up uh, Scraping the Coast. He'll be... He'll be out there and scraping the coast as well. Good stuff. We'll tell Mrs. Mayor we said what's up. We'll I hope do. Ashley's good. I know she, you've been through a lot lately, so uh, <laughs> hopefully she's good, homie, and uh, we'll talk soon, brother. Sounds like a plan, brother. You take care. Enjoy. Have a good one. And, hey, Airhead Nation, man, stay low. Whatever you do, support the scene in any way you can. Take care. Peace. Hold on. Yo, yo, as I mentioned, we're getting ready to talk with our next guest, and I want to thank everyone for the continued support. I also want to thank one of our key partners, Hamburg Weekend, where if you're on YouTube, you can see here on the screen, H-A-M-M-E-R-D, weekendwear.com. You're going to see on their landing page here, they have some of their newer um, designs. And uh, for those that did not know, they have Living in the Limelight, this Toyota that's now owned by Tom. It was, of course, on the cover of Tailgate. Uh, it's a fantastic 
uh, truck. But one of my favorites here is Craig's OBS Extended Cab. And this is the free Stylin S-T-Y-L-E-N OBS t-shirt. Uh, very awesome products. There's tons of stuff out here. Uh, they're the only vendor that we know of that offers a t-shirt subscription. And if you get in on that early in the year, you get uh, all each of the two designs that they drop every two months or so. They've got hats, stickers, shirts, banners, and much more. Make sure you check them out, hammeredweekendwear.com, H-A-M-M-E-R-D, weekendwear.com, and let them know that OLP sent you. Okay, here we go. So I did say I'm going to call Joey Whitby, or is it Joey Whitby? It's Joey Whitby. Whitby. Listen, man, you were at Forbidden Fantasy. Boots on the ground. OLP Capo. Did you have a good time? I had a blast. It was so much fun. Talk to us a little bit about you peel out of town. How was the trip there? You know, uh, the trip was great. Mr. Chad Luke uh, surprised everybody. He came to my house, and uh, him and I gallivanted over there to uh, Forbidden Fantasy Friday morning. Got there a little late due to uh, just putting a car back together for a show. (laughs) Now, your wagon, we're recording on Tuesday. It could almost be Wagon Wednesday, but your wagon, you you were getting it ready because you were having some paint refreshed on it, right? Yeah, I had some paint refreshed on it, and I had Matt Hutchison and his stepson, uh, Boston, that's his name, uh, put some graphics on the hood. And, you know, the 15-year-old kid did an amazing job with the help of Matt Hutchison. I mean, the kid did majority of the work. Yeah, and Matt, he's on Instagram, and it's H-U-T-C-H? Yes. Hutchinson, I think it is, right? So H-U-T-C-H-E-S-O-N, Matt Hutchison. Yeah, go, go look him up. Now, this wagon, I understood that Joey had kind of brought it home, or excuse me, uh, Tom, the Tom and Joey show. Tom had brought it back. You were excited because, you know, the wagons were super popular in an era, and not saying that they're not now. I mean, they're they're beloved by many, but you kind of had, you wanted to get that, was that warm and feeling right? back, right? Yeah. And you kind of did. Uh, talk to us about some of the stuff you did on it, because I think you refreshed some of the lines and stuff because it was juiced. Uh, it, I refreshed. I, I updated some of the hydraulic. Like, I put a street charger in it, brand new batteries. Um, just kind of went through the whole car and... <clears throat> Just made it where it was uh, reliable. I could pretty much probably jump in that car and drive anywhere I wanted in it. Now, how long of a drive was it when you guys trailered out to Laughlin from where you're at there in Arizona? I'm about three and a half, four hours. Real easy drive. Yeah, not too, too bad. No. Now, Laughlin, is it, that's pretty north in Nevada. I haven't looked at it on a map in a while. No, it's uh, it's right across the river from uh, Bullhead City, Arizona. Okay, I remember I went through Bullhead when I went to see the dam a few years ago. Yeah, so the way Chad and I took, we went, we came up through Havasu and came in the back way into uh, the Avi. If you go through Kingman, then you're you're going to go through Laughlin and then over to the Avi. So the way we went was a little faster. Did you see any hotties like my poster right here that Craig Braid loves? My my tailgate. Did you see any? Did you see any hotties at uh, Havasu d- jumping on the boats and stuff? No, dude. Those I heard those those parties are epic, dude. Oh, they are. I've been I've been uh, in the channel at Havasu. Uh, I bet you have. I bet you have. Yeah. Hey, when Snoop said, or when you know, on Gin and Juice, when he goes, I got a pocket full of rubbers, and my homeboys do too. Do you think, was he talking about like rubber bands and stuff? I hope so, because skin to skin or it ain't going in. <laughs> <laughs> He's sick, mother effer. So, so Chad Luke ends up, you know, he surprises everyone. He he trailers the crew cab Tacoma all the way from uh, Louisiana. Yes, right? sir. And he comes all the way out. You guys gallivant on over to Laughlin. What was the vibe when you kind of got there, right? Because you get that excitement. You're like, man, the three and a half, four hour trip, wrapping that up. What was the vibe like when you first arrived there? Uh, excitement, I guess. I mean, we were really excited to get there. Um, they started rolling a little bit early, so we were just kind of anticipating get the cars off the trailer, get the truck off the trailer, you know, and get in there and start setting up so we can start seeing everybody. 
yeah, so you start to see all these. Were you immediately like, damn, I'm going to have to go check that out. I'm going to have to check that out. Because, right, there were some heavy rollers, you know, including Zach. Because I already told Mike earlier, Mike at this point needs to just sell his Mazda. Because remember all the guys I told Mike that are coming after him? Zach basically did. You know, remember when Suge Knight got knocked out that time? It was a sucker punch. But Mike basically got knocked out. Let's be honest. There's no way he's ever going to survive Zach's Mazda Cap Plus. Well, I mean, between him and what Eddie Gordy's doing to his Mazda, yep. I mean, he better he better step up his game. Get them, and, and get them. A Lambo lot of these going. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these shows don't have uh, you know third place or different classes. So Mike, Mike's got nothing. And then here's what I also told Mike. You know, Scotty the Body and I, we came up with a plan. Now, let's be honest. Zach doesn't have this on his Mazda. If you go to a Tesla store, which I know is against most people's religion, they're going to talk to you about the Falcon doors. You hit a button, and the door opens like a Falcon deal. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. So we're thinking if we could find a wrecked Tesla, we could get those doors for Mike's Mazda. Sure. There you go. See, that's a mod. <laughs> we'll, fly, we'll have to fly you in to help weld this stuff on, though. You know what I'm saying? We'll fly my son in for that. I'm, <laughs> I'm not a confident welder. I'm just barely learning. So uh, I like it. I like it, your honesty. So when you floated around the show, like talk to us a little bit about the vibe, because we've seen photos from above, like with the rooms. You see the grass, and you see the trucks, and then you see the water right there. Kind of give us the lay of the land a little bit from what you remember. Pretty much just how you say it. I mean, when you're up in the rooms and you have, you know, the Riverside view, you you get to see the the pool, the car show. You know, it's you got to be down in the 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 playing field to really get the feel of the car show, though. And and let me tell you, there was some beautiful, beautiful trucks and cars there. Now, my understanding is it's it's technically a Native American a reservation type deal, right? Yes. But what people don't realize is that you can park. And you could literally stay there years ago when we were at Showfest for uh, Sam's Town in Tunica. It was kind of the same vibe. But if you wanted to go to like a McDonald's or something like that, you could basically, my understanding is you can peel out of that place and you can kind of travel. How far is it to get to other stuff or is it kind of off the beaten path where that resort is at? Um. Avi is off the beaten path, pretty much. But I mean, actually, Laughlin is about twenty minutes away. And okay, um, was it Friday, Saturday night? Me, Chad, Troy, Caston, Brody, his wife and sister, we all jumped in uh, our our vehicles and headed over into uh, the Harrah's over in Laughlin for a steak dinner. Nice. I think Ruben had told me he may be peeled out of there and. That's the cool thing. Like you can stay there if you want. It kind of like the resort at Tun at Tunica with Sam's Town. You know, there's food, there's beverages, there's all of that stuff. But if you do want to kind of get out, you you can a little bit. Uh, so for anybody that hasn't been to FFF Forbidden Fantasy Show and Shine, you're uh, what missing you out. Them? <laughs> What's that? They're missing out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. I I hear that all the time, and it was cool because some of. Did you get to see any of the Floridians that that flew out there? I think there were a few. Uh, did you meet Jamil? Maybe not. Um, I, I kind of stuck with everybody I knew. Just yep, over here and over there. Like at every car show, I'm either over here, or over there. I'm over there, over there, over there, over there. Yeah, crip uh, walking here, crip walking there. Right. You know, uh, crip walk. Yeah, I, I like blue. Yeah. <laughs> Although so I, it was a huge success. Uh, the last couple things. Number one, my understanding, <clears throat> somebody that owns a cover truck, Mazda, not Cap Plus, he ended up cutting a deal with you. Let's hear it from the horse's mouth. What happened? <laughs> I get the car off the trailer. I'm rolling into the show. Mr. Brian Duggar comes up and says, hey, you want to sell your wagon? I'm like, sure. I threw him a number, and he goes, all right. I'll buy it right now. I know. And I you're, like, you're like, damn, I, I should have added fun. five. You should have added five more grand on to Duggar. Dude, I should have. Like, But, you know, he's a friend. And I was like, let me think about it. I, like, I didn't think you were serious, you know, and I, I didn't even get to park the car. I didn't have it wiped down. I was literally on the show field maybe five minutes before the car was sold. 
And I didn't go there to sell the car. I'm, I I do have seller's remorse because I do really like that car. But selling the car funded, gave me money to fund my mini truck that I'm building. Uh, so excellent, excellent. Yeah. You know, there there's Slim Thugga, and then there's Dugga. You know what I mean? And Dugga, yeah. <laughs> he, you know, like maybe that's what Snoop Man. He goes, you know, he's got a pocket full of rubbers. Like he's got his rubber band man right there. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. We'll call him Slim Dugga. <laughs> yeah, Slim Dugga. There you go. And he has a Mazda that was on the cover, different color now, but it's just a, a really awesome. I think it was a different color, right? It was it, back in the day. But uh, the last thing I wanted to hit upon is a twofold thing, right? You talked a little bit about the mini truck that you're building now. I know a lot of times you and I had some good conversations. You know, people, a lot of, I don't even want to use the H word, but a lot of these H word people sometimes, you know, they, they, they pile on and they go, you know, they, they try to typecast someone and I'm typecasted as being like super positive about things. You know, I have a couple moments here and there, but you know, some people are like, Oh, well, Joey, he, yeah. I mean, he, he, he bought that. He bought, you know, hard taco, you know, he, he did this, but what you're able to do now was one of your favorite trucks back in the day was a certain year to uh, Toyota pickup. And now you're able to, uh, you're going to build your dreams, brother. Yeah, I am. So I had one once before, and it it was really nice, but I was in a really, really horrible place in my life, and I I unfortunately had to sell it. It's still being driven to this day. You know, um, Jason Kilpatrick owns it now. Um, I think unless I get get the money to buy it off of him, he's the last owner of the truck. He won't sell it. So he said he'll sell it to me, but I'm just going to build another one. And yours is an extra cab, right? Mike calls them all extended cabs, but you know he has to understand that you don't. It's sacrilegious to call a Toyota an extended cab. Let's be honest. Well, they all have their name: Isuzu Space Cab, Mazda Cab Plus, Nissan King Cab, Toyota X Truck Cab, ERA, yep. not EX X Truck Cab. Yep. yep. And we'll we'll fix to learn, Mike, one of these days. Yeah. You know, he's he's fitting to learn. <laughs> we're, we'll fit. We'll fit to learn them. Yeah. So I says. So I says to him. I says. You know what I mean. That's a very southern thing. Boy, you're gonna learn today. <laughs> <laughs> that that means you're gonna have a lot of problems right there. Um. <laughs> so the the cool thing is, uh, you know, Dugga he gets the car, and then now you've got a little bit more funds to put into the Toyota Extra Cap. I know you're one of the faithful that comes across the state. You gallivant all or across the country, rather, uh, for Southeast Money Truck and Nationals. You, last time you were out that way, you were helping your son move back to Arizona. How excited are you a couple weeks away to hit Mini Nats again all the way from Arizona? Oh, man. I can't even tell you how excited I am. That's why I was, I was trying to get my truck built because I was going to drive that sucker. And it just, time is against me and... Yeah, mini nats is like right around the corner. So, yeah, I, you have to do it have right. Time, I wouldn't even have enough time to shake it down. Yeah, you have to do it right. And sometimes I, I've done this before. You know, we get very ambitious. We want to have something done by a certain date and things like that. And it's good to set those goals because here's the thing: even if you can't make it, you kind of reset the shot clock and you go, "Okay, where's the next line in the sand?" Where do you want to be maybe later this year, by the end of the year? Do you have any goals set to try to, like, maybe have it running and driving by a certain date? Well, I mean, I didn't have any plans to even have the truck at Mini Nats this year. It's just when I sold the wagon, I'm like, well, I guess the truck's going to go now. Um, but like I said, I'm, I'm just going to take a different truck um, that I've been working on. So uh, Excellent. I'll try to get that thing drivable tonight. And you're still out there banging RA, right? The the, yes. the line, 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 slash RA. Yes. RA, Arizona. Uh, Joey Whittaby, one of our big homies. Uh, give us uh, one of the, I mean, I swear you were the movie phone guy. Can you just give us one? Hello and welcome to the movie phone. <laughs> For smut fast hit one. Are you want me to do it that way instead? Yeah, why not? Hello and welcome to smut fast. If you know the porno you want to watch, press one. <laughs> <laughs> with so much drama, with ODB, it's kind of hard being on OLP. Something like right? that, right? Something like that. 
listen, give a shout out to the, your, your homie. He came by at Lone Star Throwdown. I didn't get a chance to see him. Fletcher? Mark, Mark Fletch? Mark! He's coming up behind me. Here he comes. Mark, Mark, we need you to make a cameo. Mike told you I was the one out running around. I didn't get a chance to t- slap hands with you there. No, well, here, here we go. Boom, look at that. Right. <laughs> Just like that. Hey, are you going to go to Mini Nats too? No. Uh, most, most, next year, I'm shooting for it. I tried to do. Oh, here we go. Yeah, because yeah, you just out of state shows a year. So uh, LSU That's... is one of them, and then I'm looking at scraping or maybe rolling in the cool. Red Rocks. Yep. Scraping the Rockies, not scraping the yeah. coast. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. There's a lot of scrapings out there. Yeah, Joey, you, Joe, you're no stranger to scraping stuff, are you, man? <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me come scrape your logo now, boy. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> you like what I did there, Fletcher? All yeah. right, man. It's good seeing you. Uh, Joey, stay on the rise, dude. Listen, your positivity, uh, I love how it kind of transcends. You know, at, at the end of the day, we all have some tough days here and there, but stay on the rise, keep the haters at bay, and just keep doing what you love, brother. We know you you, you love doing it. Oh, one of my haters was uh oh i'm sorry wrong word one of the people that always gave me a hard time about buying relaxed taco was at forbidden fantasy and i told him i'm building a truck now and he's like oh man that's f- freaking awesome i fuck freaking love it and about time you built your own truck and i'm like i'd rather buy one still it's cheap <laughs> it's cheaper and it takes less time you know what i mean yes yes well, listen, dude, thank you for taking some time to talk about FFF 2024. And I want everyone to stick with us. We're going to roll into the audio with Matt Hodgson. Great interview. If you're not on YouTube right now, check us out for the rest of this episode. And we'll see you just in a couple weeks, my big homie. Don't forget, big shout out to Art and Noise happening April 13th. Bring the That's noise. Right. That's right. Thank you, because that event got rained out, if you can believe it, in Arizona. And I'm glad you reminded me that's not this weekend that they're going to hear this episode. It's going to be the next weekend in Arizona. It's in uh, Phoenix? Yeah. Phoenix. So Art yep. of N-O-I-Z-E. We had the guy on earlier this year. Thanks, Joey, for linking us up with them. No problem. All right, everyone, stick with us again. Thank you to our title sponsor, Scraping the Coast, every June, the third weekend in June. This is very nice. Well, I don't know what to do with my hand. Two thumbs up. Yo, yo, so we're going to roll into the audio with our final guest, and I want to give a huge shout-out to Local Rides. You heard me talk about them earlier. It's L-O-C-A-L Rides, R-I-D-E-Z Magazine. Uh, if you're on YouTube, you can see here on the screen, Local Rides Magazine. And here's the cool thing. These, uh, this homegrown product, if you will, uh, they support all these different shows that they can attend throughout the country. If you go to shop, uh, you'll be amazed. Their issues come in about eight ninety nine on the lower side. Uh, there's even one here for seven ninety nine. But they have some awesome products. I own several issues of this magazine, and I really enjoy it. So I would ask if you can support Bill and the team at Local Rides. Hit up Local Rides with the Z Magazine dot com. Enjoy this interview. Hey, hey, we're super excited to sit down with our friend, Matt Hodgson. And Matt, thank you so much for taking the time, man. No, thank you. I'm uh, absolutely thrilled to be here. Hey, we really appreciate it. Now, I always like to kind of start off, you know, you're a listener and, you know, obviously one welcome you to the show. But I know a little bit of background about you. Maybe all the listeners don't or the viewers Maybe just kind of give us a little bit of background, who you are, where you grew up, Matt. Yeah, uh, I'm Matt Hodgson from Bel Air, Maryland. Uh, Grew up, been in Maryland my entire life. Um, Been mini trucking since 98, 99. And uh, I do graphic design. I own downtime designs. We do handcrafted art and a lot of uh, show flyers and all types of cool stuff for the scene. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. Now, I've always thought of the 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 term or the company name downtown designs kind of synonymous with you my understanding was you kind of went to school and some of that background talk to us a little bit about maybe when you decided that you wanted to go that route in life yeah um i was in my senior year of high school trigonometry class and i was i absolutely hated life i could not figure out math you know to, to save my life. And there was a chart at the back of the class said, you know, all the different jobs on this side and then all the different kinds of math across the top. Well, 
the job that used the least amount of math was graphic design. And I was like, you know what? Right there, that's what I need to do with my life. And, you know, it was a, it was a joke, but I really just followed my passion for art. Uh, ended up at Millersville University in Pennsylvania going to art school and started, you know, just, just mess around, you know, Photoshop, Illustrator, little uh, jobs here and there. Um, and, you know, even airbrushing fraternity and sorority T-shirts in my dorm room just to, to make a little bit of extra coin and awesome. found that I fell in love uh, with design. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's funny because in middle school, I thought I was good at math. <laughs> and then like high school, somehow I got through all of high school with taking like prob and stat is what I remember. So when I got to community college, I remember going, you know, doing decent on the SAT tests and going into community, ended up going to community college. And I was like, what is all this stuff? And they're like, well, what's the last math you had? I was like, prob and stat. We were counting license plates in the parking lot of Land Lakes High School, you know, and they're like, you're in the wrong, you need to like, you know, ju jump down a couple. But yeah, it is kind of crazy how when you think back to a lot of people will say that in their high school years and their kind of early, you know, uh, before they kind of hit adulthood, that that's what, where they figure things out. And yeah. I'm always kind of curious because, you know, not everybody does, but it's pretty cool to hear that you kind of knew then that, hey, I didn't want to go down this path. So it kind of led Absolutely. you down this other path. Yeah, I was I was, you know, sh even shooting photos for my high school newspaper and realized that I was doing it in a different style than, you know, the other photographers were. They were shooting more, you know, straight on headshots and whatever it took. But I was, you know, doing the, the sports stories and had the, the nice low angles and my you could tell my shots were a little bit different uh, than the other photographers. And I really uh, followed that passion in this college. Yeah. yeah. Pretty awesome. Now, when you think back to those high school years, I remember we're probably not too far off in age. You know, I graduated, you know, before you probably in 97, but you know, back in those days, car audio was big. You know, a few guys had lower trucks where I was from, not a lot, a lot of, you know, cars with car audio and things like that. Did you find yourself like many of us in high school? You were he, the nose was in the magazine, and you know you were kind of getting that addiction to vehicles. Absolutely, uh, ninety seven, ninety eight. I found myself on my Diamondback BMX bike at the local Kmart with a free trial subscription card to Mini Truck and Mag. Oh yeah, and I was like, you know what? I, I'd been you know looking at lowrider magazines and you know just seeing all that. And I was like, you know what, let's, let's try this mini truck. It's free. Why not? So I sent that in. And I remember getting my first issues. And I'm like, there was nothing like that around me. At least that's what I thought. Sure. Until I was at a 4th of July parade in 98, 97. And there was a local car club called nice dreams. And they had trucks on air or hydraulics that I had never seen in my area. And I knew right then that I was completely hooked. Awesome. We're talking with Matt Hodgson. Please stick with us to the end. We got a lot to talk about. Now, speaking of that, Matt, when um, for folks that don't know, Mini Truck and Magazine is back. It's uh, mini truck and mag net. And when you think about the marketing, especially in that era, I mean, sure, print has kind of went by the wayside a little bit because we're in this digital age, right? Many of us still want the print, but yep. when you think back, so many of us got hooked like at the grocery stores, right? Or the newsstand, if you will. And those little send this in, you know, get a year free, maybe 15 oh, bucks. Yeah. You convince your parents and things like that. How <laughs> all, you have some of the memories uh, when you and I were chatting, uh, we, you talked about and how ironic was this? So 25 years ago this month, I just posted the March 99. Okay. It had Derek's blue Mazda on it. Yeah, the, 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 with the shaved bed. Yep. Yes. Yeah. That and you, you were kind of telling me that that, if you if you recall correct, if I recall correctly, that was the one that got you hooked. That was the first issue that ever <laughs> showed up in my mailbox. And I was like, well, I truck on the ground. I had a no bed. I was confused. I was, you know, I didn't know what was going on. I loved it. No matter yeah. what, like, everything in that issue, I'm sure I still have the cutouts somewhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and here was the crazy thing. So about a year, a little less than a year and a half later, I get to see that truck at Showfest 2000. 
And I always loved the color. My dad and I, rest in peace to my pops, you know, we always loved the blue on any vehicle. And, uh, you know, that truck had bounced around a bunch. And come to find out, a few years ago, my friend Jeff at Devious Customs, he told me that Derek had passed away, the guy that owned that truck, which is kind of crazy. And you think about, man, that was 25 years ago. So much has happened uh, in that. But, you know, to me, it's so cool to be able to look back. You can almost pinpoint based upon the type of music you were listening to, yep. the grade that you were in, of course, the issue. And to me, that's just awesome. Yeah, that I mean, that really set the tone for my high school uh, experience. You know, I started building a, a little S10 back then, a 94 S10. I refused to drive it. I bought it and refused to drive it until it was lowered. And I lowered it, got a 7.9 drop kit, which at the time was stupid <laughs> and i remember i could not drive it because it was lowered so much in the front i had to borrow money from my parents to get 50 series tires i needed some 205 50 15s because it was sitting on the 75s and it just rubbed my fender well so bad oh yeah and if you guys are watching on youtube uh matt can you see this one yep i see it that's right in front of my high school yeah there you go that's Air high school yep yeah, and you know, you think back to '94. Uh, Courtney once wrote, I think, in Street Trucks, and he talked a little bit about the '94 was kind of the last of the Mohicans because it was the first year of the round body style as we know yeah. it today. But it kind of didn't have all of the safety features that really started coming in in '95 and '96. So I look back to that grill. You know, I had the same grill. I had those same. I no offense, I had those mirrors on my '94, and I hated them, man. I, I was I like. Love them. Yeah, see, and they're, and they're different, right? Everyone has a different opinion, but, you know, that, I, I know, did, did yours have carpet in it? Uh, yes, that one, that had carpet in it. Cool. And I have another 94 S10 in my garage right now that I daily drive. That's so cool. And I bought those mirrors for because I like them so much. Yeah, see, and, and it's funny because some of that stuff we go back to, like, uh, I often talk about, uh, you know, if you think about the full-size trucks, a lot of those bolt-on accessories like the Lund visors and the Razorbacks and the cab spoilers, a lot of people, we hated it during that era. Now I love it. So kind of, you know, to each their own. Talk to us a little bit about this photo here. Uh, that was right before I went away to college. So that was 2002. Um, the truck that's parked at the end of my grandmother's street where she still lives today. She's 94 years old. Wow. Um, and I, I wanted, you know, for posterity, just to have a picture of me and my truck um, before I went away. To school. I'm wearing my Millersville Marauders shirt. Um, it's loaded on some 15 inch KMC Sancho's, which I actually bought from Eric Fulber way before we ever really knew each other. Like we do now. Uh, off the mini trucks with an X dot com message board. That sounds like uh, some nefarious <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I, I, I mean, it, at this point, it had the graphics on there because the guys who did the paint, uh, it was their semester project at Wyotech, and something happened, and the blue paint bubbled. So oh, I yeah. had we had to cover it somehow. So they sanded off the bubbles and painted these you know, crazy one side of graphics, you know, come, come down the hood and through the driver's door. Oh yeah. Uh, just on the driver's side. Yeah. And those wheels, if I remember correctly, those were the same ones that were in that infamous ad for a long time where it had the S 10 with the shaped corner lights, which I'm not a huge fan of on S 10s, by the way. It, no, but, I understand. <laughs> yeah. Either love or hate it. Now this photo, again, I know some, mo many of you, most of our audience is through podcast apps, so we totally get it. But if you do get an opportunity, even if you want to just kind of watch this part of it later via YouTube, you can. This photo is cool because what I see is a sliding rag top, clear yep. glass, right, a.k.a. glass house. But also those Phantom grills, they're pretty rare these days, and that's the one that had the corner lights yep. shaved, but you also have the 98 and up uh, bumper and valence. Yep, my... Uh... I didn't want the shaved corners, but that's how I found it again on the mini trucks.com message yep. board. And I, I have a price list. I'll have, I'll send it to you of from my planner when I was my senior year in high school of every nickel and dime that I spent on that truck. Yeah, that's amazing. And by the way, I don't mind these Phantom Girls with the shaved corners. I just don't like the fenders with the shaved corners when it's, it just uh, looks odd to me okay. on the S tens <laughs> on the S tens. And then um, I think there's one more photo here. And again, it kind of shows some of the graphics and the different wheels that you had at the time, Matt. 
Yeah, I those are 18 inch Myrtle shoots. Uh, I was driving on 95 on, and they had adapters on them. And this is why cheap adapters are not good. It sheared off, shot the wheel through my fender. My mom was riding shotgun at the time. I was 17, 18 years old. Scared her to death. Wow, <laughs> just insane. Well, um, th- that's that's pretty cool to kind of go down memory lane a little bit there. Let me stop sharing. Now, that photo at your grandmother's, you know, kind of circa what year was that we're talking? That was 2002. That was 2000. right before, yeah, I graduated high school and, and uh, left for college in 2002. Yeah, so you go away to college. Are you still thinking minis on the mind or, you know, what's your thought process there? Is it mostly partying on ladies or what's the deal? <laughs> Well, I couldn't actually take my truck to school uh, freshman year, sophomore year, so I sold it. Uh, I got into Volkswagens after that for a little while. A lot of my friends had custom Volkswagens, and, and those guys really are, in my opinion, the, the closest thing to mini sure. truck. Those sure. guys aren't afraid to throw something on air, throw nice big wheels on there. Um, the, the custom body modifications, you know, they're doing those. I hung out with uh, a lot of kids who were who got really deep into that side of it. And oh, yeah. uh, so I, I sold the truck and, and bought a Volkswagen that I had up until 2006, 2007. Um, and I sold that to go back to a mini truck. Excellent. Excellent. And we know some of the former guests that we've had on, you know, the big VW guys and even like Charles Armstrong, when you think about yeah. the time machine and the, uh, you know, the, the, the turn signals, which I always... <laughs> Yep. Yeah, thank you. I always forget the term on those. And and even Rich Arachi from Severed and, and some of the guys, you know, there's, like you said, there's that, that bleeding over. And really, it's kind of just like the passion. Absolutely. So when, you know, you get back into minis, is that, you know, kind of bring us through the timeline. What's the next ride you end up with? Uh, I, I sold the Volkswagen, bought a, a Stepside Sierra, regular cag Stepside Sierra, like Keith Decker's. I okay. love his truck. I'm uh, RA Pennsylvania. Um, Keith Decker, black and red, two tone, beautiful truck. Yes. And I, I I wanted that body style. I drove that for three weeks before I found a crew cab five speed GMC Canyon. Now and- I remember we were talking about this a little bit, and here was my crazy thing, right? So I remember when I was younger, I had I don't talk about this a lot. I had a Ford Mustang was my first car. <laughs> my friends had it it was a really nice car but it seemed like as soon as i got that this guy that got me into mini trucks i've never really told this full story but his uh 88 mighty max topper full stereo ghost flames comes up for sale and i was like man like i don't have the money now right so how did you go about maybe convincing the pops uh to help you out on trading in a vehicle that you just had for three weeks to then get this other vehicle that you really wanted. That's exactly what I had to do. Cause my dad went with me to buy the Sierra and you know, I did some strong negotiating when I bought it. So I still had a, a window sticker that said I bought it for, or that said it was 11 and I actually had bought it for nine. So, you know, I luckily dad came, you know, went with me to the dealership. It was about an hour, hour and a half away to look at the Canyon and I, you know, I was able to convince him. I said, you know, if I convince him that I, to give me $11,000 that I just paid for this, so I'm not actually losing when I, I gained two grand, he's like, okay, that's, you know, that's no problem. And I was able to do that. Uh, I, was, you, I, I just want exactly what I paid for this three weeks ago. And I'm going I'm to buy your, your Canyon right here. And sure enough, dealership went for it. And it was a uh, fantastic experience. Now, my understanding, what really led you to the canyon, too, is not everybody likes driving stick shift. That was like the main draw, because I'm guessing most of them probably are automatic. Yes, especially the crew cabs. They only made crew cab uh, five-speed Colorados and Canyons in 2004 to 2006. So the fact that it was a stick that I could still throw all my friends in, all my gear, get on the road... This was even, you know, I wasn't even thinking about bagging or body dropping it or, or putting any work onto it. I just wanted it to daily drive. Got it. Yeah, pretty cool. So when you first got it, it was white and it had the standard, I guess, standard bed for those trucks at that yeah. time. They were maybe the shortest bed. They, it came with a little, little shorty five foot bed that came on the uh, on the crew cabs. 
now what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen again. So again, if you uh, folks are watching on YouTube, definitely appreciate it. Stick with us to the end. What we're going to do is kind of <laughs> now I know these might not be in the uh, the exact order, so definitely apologize. Um, but it'll still kind of help get the message across. So like this is what I was looking at here. Now is this one you went and picked up? Yep. Uh, this is, looks like an S10 bed, or is that a, yep. no? That is a Colorado bed. That's yeah. That's uh, a regular cab Colorado bed that I went down to Virginia. Uh, with a buddy of mine to pick up because at this point I was determined that this was going to be my build. This is something I wanted to take all the way. This was 2007 where there were still very few um, Colorado th Colorados or, or canyons being built at that point. Um, yep. I think maybe there were three or four that had been built, one or two that had been body dropped. Um, so I wanted to do something different. I knew I, I did a quick Photoshop. I liked the look of the six foot bed on there. And I knew that I had to do that because no one else had done it. Now, how long from this period here before you start getting kind of into some of the other photos I'm going to go through, like with the full chassis, the full chassis came out in 2008. Okay. Um, John Shepard, uh, Shepard chassis, Harwood, Maryland, um, built the, the full frame. We showed just the frame at low rollers and summer bash 2008. Got it. Now, did you, I don't want to go too far off track here, but did you, had you became friends with Phil Fowler and the, the low roller guys up until that point, or is this when you start to become friends with them? Uh, uh, yeah, I have been trying traveling around a lot with a guy named Sean Stamos, um, who was in low rollers years ago. Um, he introduced me to Phil and all the guys in the club and we just started hanging out, really getting along. Um, I really, we're, we're a very, you know, small, close-knit group. I liked that it wasn't a, a huge um, club. Just lots of, uh, you know, when we got together, it, it was like hanging out with family. And uh, Excellent. Yeah, that's a good group of guys. You know, Phil Fowler's a little questionable. No, I'm just kidding. We, <laughs> we all love Phil. We know Phil Fowler for president one of these days. Oh, I can't wait. 2024. There you go. So the crew cab. Now, this is something, you know, you were kind of hitting upon and it always confuses me when I think about the Mazdas because there's a few guys out there that have like a, a cab plus, and then I can't even rattle off all of the names. Uh, well, not the names. Like so, so you have one category where it's like okay, S10 extended cab, Mazda's a cab plus, right? right? But then on these trucks, you add another layer, and you go, okay, well, not all of the beds are the same. If it's a regular cab, if it's an extended cab, if it's a crew cab, so. What like what you're saying is you took a regular cab bed and you put it on the crew cab, which is a little longer. Correct. Yeah, it's 11 inches different between uh, a crew cab bed and a regular cab. It's just the space between the wheel well and the back of the cab. Got it. Yep. Okay. Makes sense. Just and from talking to you in the past and looking at some of the photos, like this was a mod that was kind of cool where you did something unique to the tailgate. Yeah. This was my this was my uh, half tailgate. I oh I wanted. Something that when you lowered the tailgate, it was still even with the bed floor. My big thing at that time was drive-in movies. I wanted to be able to go to the drive-in movie theater, lay in the bed of the truck, put the tailgate down, and not have to look over or look at a step. Oh, yeah. Well, you know that's making you sound really old school, right? When you say drive-in movies. <laughs> <I'm> you know, <laughs> The younger kin folks listening like, what the heck is that? Oh, but, uh, in, in all seriousness. So now this is the cool thing. When you set out to build this – Something I know about you is you are not a fan, not that there's anything wrong with trailers, but you basically <laughs> have always, I mean, you've lived kind of in your blood, Matt, with the whole motto of built to drive. Absolutely. Uh, it all started because I just couldn't afford a truck and a trailer. Uh, sure. I told John, the, the guy who built the frame, that this needed to be wheels on the ground 24-7, uh, needed to be able to drive, you know, yep. from show to show to take it to target, to go to home Depot on the weekends, wherever it went, I was going to be behind the wheel. And he really went above and beyond made a beautiful frame. Yeah. Um, we saw that it has been bulletproof. I put uh, about 75,000 miles on that frame after it was body dropped. Crazy. And here there's at least probably eight people in the ride, right? Because you got four to five in the cab at least, and then four in the bed. 
Yeah, that, I mean, that's Eric Fulber there peeking out from uh, the back there. And, yeah. I don't know if you can see my mouse right here. That looks like Felber. And then, obviously, you love skating here. You've got the seat back, right? And you're just cruising down the highway. Uh, and this is just a really, I think, a photo that epitomizes, maybe is the word, uh, your love for low, man. Yeah, that that's one of my, my favorite photos. Uh, Jen Beebe took that picture on the way home from Grounded for Life. Um, I couldn't even tell you what year that was, but yep. that's one of my favorite shots. Yeah, there's no beard, so it had to have been like 100 years <laughs> ago, Matt. <laughs> yeah, so we're just kind of going through some. Now, eventually, I want to talk about this really cool mod, Is the, or possibly now. Is this when you did the mod that you showed me at Mini Nats a couple years ago? Yes, sir. Uh, it's the start of the BMW uh, 318 Ti ragtop. Uh, it's a full electric uh rag that's flush with the roof it doesn't sit on top it was something that uh i saw a guy post on facebook he found in a junkyard uh in north carolina and he put a picture up there a guy named cliff brown and i said wow that's so cool can you bring it home and he's like no i, I can't bring it home you know so i said okay well then i'm gonna have to find one and i ended up finding a bmw uh it's a 96 to 98 318 ti california edition i remember you told me i was going to make sure you got that in there when phil introduced me to you and he says hey come check out matt's crew cab uh, he i remember you rattled it off and i remembered at the end california edition yep yeah so i i was able to find one that was on the eastern shore of maryland and you know i called the the junkyard and you know they said okay well you know that's no problem how do you want us to get this out i said just cut the whole roof off <laughs> and they said, well, that's going to cost more because then the car's ruined. I said, I, that's great. Just cut the roof off because I need all the wiring. I want to make sure I have everything I need uh, to, to get that to work. And sure enough, oh, yeah. I picked it up and threw the roof in the in the bed of my other truck at the time and drove it on home. Yeah, pretty cool. Now, when you first get the truck finished, was this the, this was the first color, right? Yes. This was brilliant green metallic. Uh, it's off of the UK Chevy color palette, so it was never actually uh, on a vehicle in the US. Now, how did you find that color, Matt? Uh, I was hanging out with Mike Bischoff, the guy who originally painted it, um, and we were just looking through color books at his shop. Um, he was working for a, a Ford dealership, and we were just you know hanging out, flipping through colors, and he said, just tell me what you like. And I, I saw Excellent. this color, and he we couldn't find it anywhere. We really, you know, I went, you know, wrote down the color name, did some Google searching, and realized that this color has n virtually can't be seen. It came on a Chevy Aveo in Europe, which I've still Googled and never seen pictures of this color. That's sick, yeah. And the cool thing about it is, you know, being with a little bit longer bed, you know, you see a little peak of the rag top that's back crew cab of course a glass house that real clean front end with the chrome bumper man it really looked good here it looks like in front of like an abandoned house that cool photo yeah i always love to just you know go out and shoot photos around uh my area and see what i can find and if i see a cool parking lot i'll stop and, and take my phone out or you know if i have my camera with me every now and again just shoots shoots to, to keep my skills sharp oh yeah i like it now it was featured in was it this it was this issue right because you, well, you this, see the little insert photo down here. Yeah, it was never actually featured in mini trucking, but this was the you know the last issue of mini trucking. I always uh, wanted a cover of mini trucking. That was always you know the goal when building, yep. and that this was my cover shot. Uh, it's actually an inset from the Grounded for Life show coverage. Excellent. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I'm doing the flip throughs for anybody that if you're on YouTube now, please subscribe because we're going through every issue. I think there was um off the top of my head, there was the other issue that came right after this, which was the Ford, that weird front end on it. Um or I always get those two mixed up. It was either the Ford or this one. Yeah, okay. And and I should know, but I, I sometimes get the later issues mixed up. Uh pretty cool stuff there. Now this is your lovely wife? Yes. Uh, my wife, Amber, uh, will be celebrating 10 years uh, this coming April. I'm sorry, honey, but I'm going to be in Maggie Valley. 
on our anniversary. Oh man, dude, you're, dude, man, you're. Uh, I mean, she's a great woman. Then I she, guess she is a saint who puts up with me. I'm sorry. It, our anniversary is on April 19th. I do remember, but I'm going to be at Mini Nats. Well, I don't know if you should have said it that way, but we get where you're going. Now, she, this is cool because yeah. the it looks like your wedding, right? You you have the truck in the background. You have flip flops on. You have a green tie that ties into the color of the truck. You got your awesome wife there, your lovely wife. Uh, did, was the truck incorporated in as the drive away vehicle? It it was. It was one of the uh, two times that I ever drugged the truck on purpose. Uh, <laughs> what, what? I'm sure there's photos of that. Uh, there are photos from the first time I drug it, but leaving the wedding, there were there were no photos out there. Um, oh, but yeah. it was, you know, I I didn't do it on purpose very often. Right, I got you. That, that, that that's a special day. Now, this is Mike A shooting the truck uh, with transport wheels, right? And this eventually does this eventually run in for slammed. This actually ran in uh, street trucks. Street trucks. Okay, that's right. You did say that earlier. Yeah, th- uh, we I switched up the wheels. The wheels in the wedding picture. I, I had a set of intros um, that I just bent so many times that I got you know really frustrated. And needed something to switch, so I switched over to these the 22 inch transport wheels, um, and, and really had the old school look of the truck. There was pinstriping on the hood and the tailgate. Um, underneath the hood had checkerboard inner fenders. Was going for for a modern kind of street rod. Oh yeah, yeah. And now now that you say it, I do remember seeing it in street trucks. This is um, some of the kiddos. I know you want to give a shout out to your kids. Absolutely. This is uh, three of my kids before the fourth was even. And yet, this was the day that I sold the truck when it was green. I wanted to get a, a picture of, of of the kids with the truck before it went down the road. Yeah, pretty cool. And what I want to do is I'm going to stop sharing for a minute. So, you know, talking with Matt Hodgson here and talking about this progression of the truck, when you get to that point and you say, hey, I'm going to let this thing go, maybe it wasn't easy. What was your mindset then? Were you looking to maybe kind of switch up and do something different? Yeah, uh, I felt at the time that I had taken it as far as I wanted to, um, and I was I was getting really into classic cars. I wanted, you know, I was reading a lot of Rotter's Journal. Mini trucking had gone away. I, I was thinking, you know, I wasn't feeling great about the scene, and so I was like, okay, well, let's switch it up and do something different. And I sold the truck. I bought a '57 Ford Fairlane convertible. Beautiful car. Um, really loved it when it was running right. <laughs> But it, that old motor, it just, I'm not a real mechanical guy by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so if things weren't running right, the carburetor needed to be tinkered with. That wasn't, it wasn't me. The car needed um, a little bit more work than I was prepared to put into it. And the classic car game is not uh, for the faint of heart. It's not cheap. Um, yeah. Not, not that mini trucking is cheap either, but it's it's a whole nother level when you're talking uh, 50s cars. I think when many of us, you know, everybody kind of looks at, they value things differently. You know, it's like, we'll go spend $500 on something and then maybe not want to buy a dollar app, right, for <laughs> on, on an iPhone or whatever. So everybody kind of values things a little bit differently. And obviously, if you're not mechanically inclined or, you know, like me, I don't take carburetors apart, you know, I, my buddies do, but, you know, you kind of get into a mindset of, Hey, maybe I want to jump back into what I was in. Maybe for you personally, there weren't greener pastures on the other side. So you kind of go, Hey, I'm going to maybe kind of stick back. I tried it. I dabbled in it a little bit. So you end up punting that. Do you immediately start looking for another mini truck? I went through a phase where I was going to do, all types of things. I I bought a uh, 720 King Cab and I bought a Silverado that I was going to put the motor from the Silverado in the 720. And I realized, all right, now that's not going to work. I, I, despite the fact that I put the plan together, did the rendering, everything's beautiful. All right, that's not going to work. Sent that down the road. So I was like, okay, well there's only been one new body style Colorado done. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. So I go out and I buy a two wheel drive, 2016 Colorado. I have that for about a month and I didn't like the way it drove. I didn't like the way it drove stock. I wasn't in love with it. I knew right then I was like, I'm not going to dump 
thousands of dollars into something that I don't love. And I get to talking with my wife and I was like, all right, well, what am I going to do? And sure enough, the gentleman I sold the Colorado to Shannon Hipple, a good friend of mine out of Pennsylvania, um, puts up a, a post on Facebook saying he's thinking about selling it. And so I, I messaged him and I was like, all right, let's, let's make it happen. Uh, you know, and I was able to buy the truck right back from him. He did an excellent, he was an excellent ta- caretaker. Um, really, he put 5,000 miles on it in two years, which is exactly what I want. I, want, I wanted it to be driven and the truck deserved to be driven. Um, and he sold it back to me in as good a shape as I sold it to him. Excellent. That's badass. Yeah, I was really thrilled. Hey, Matt, can you give me one sec? Absolutely. Now, when you go and you acquire the truck back, do you immediately say, hey, this is my truck. I'm going to enjoy it. Or are you going to take the mini truck and mindset and go, hey, <laughs> let's tear in this thing? Uh, well, for the first, I, you know, I saw, I knew I had to get back into the truck when I saw pictures of Phil and other people tearing it up at Maggie Valley. The picture of Phil and I want to say Mike Hill in the Explorer. I, I think that's his name. I'm sorry if I messed that yeah, up. From Florida. Yes. Uh, cruising down the street in in Maggie Valley. I, I saw that photo and I was like, all right, I need the truck back. Cruising down the street, but not in a 6 <laughs> in a six mini truck. Foe. No, not in a 6 <laughs> And uh, so I, I, you know, I've got the truck back. I was thrilled about it. Um, Shannon had put a set of 20s on there, 20 inch intros. Um, I didn't love that look. I, the truck was built for, for 22s and I wanted to get those back on there. Um, so I immediately bought a new set of 22s to put on there, took it down to Maggie Valley, had a, had a great time. Um, wasn't planning on switching it up. I was thinking, okay, well, we're just going to keep this cruise it while I build something new. Um, but then I kind of maybe ran it through the back wall of my garage and had to redo it. Yeah. And I, th- I'm trying to remember if you, I think you put a photo in here. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. And, and we'll see yeah, right here. There go. Um, not, not my proudest moment. Uh, I left it in reverse and I, you know, I jumped out. I say that I was going to answer my wife calling me for something. She says that I just jumped out because I'm an idiot. And let's be honest, she's probably right. <laughs> well, you know, it can be detrimental to have this happen or any little kind of incident or a scratch or anything on a vehicle. So you obviously kind of put your nose to the grind and decided, hey, uh, let's go full force. Yeah, I was talking to a shop about redoing it, and I said, you know, I, my first thought was, okay, can we just fix the bed, just fix, you know, the, the paint on there? It should, you know, be able to be pulled out and, and fixed. And the, the shop I took to said, well, if we're going to do it, if our name's going to be on it, we're going to completely redo it. Oh, okay. So, and I I'm I agreed with that because I was playing with the idea of redoing it anyway. Um so they said, yeah, let's let's go and completely revamp the whole truck. Um and I that's something I I was like, okay, cool. Let's do new color. I want graphics. I wanted uh something that was going to be a little bit wild underneath, something I didn't want crazy colors. I wanted to keep it all one solid color. Um and do, you know, tonal airbrush, kind of like the low rider hood murals and things like that. And that's what we're seeing here, right? Yes. You're seeing the the start of the the airbrush work um, inside the graphics. You can see it, it, it was pretty subtle until you got it out in the sunlight. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And, and that's one of the cool things about it that you'd have to almost look at it. Uh, we'll go back to some of those photos to, to kind of see like, it, you know, this front three quarter shot is like, it's blue, mm-hmm. but then you, you kind of do a double take and you're like, oh, yeah, there's some darker blue on there, some <laughs> graphics. Like, to, to your point, I think subtle is the best word. Yeah, that's that's what I was really wanted to go for. Something that when when you, you know, first glance, oh, it's a, it's a nice blue truck. But if you walked up on it, you could really see uh, the graphics and the amount of airbrush work that's been involved. 
Oh, yeah. And another thing that stuck out to me was the interior. How, you know, a lot of these trucks, and it's no disrespect to anybody, everybody kind of builds their, what they want, but these newer trucks often have a lot of creature comforts. You know, mid-2000s, you know, they, they obviously get more features as we get closer to 2024, current time. But with these trucks, you know, they're they're pretty nice on the interior, but that's something that stuck out to me. Like, you did the whole dash. You did everything. Yeah, I I, the, I mean, the interior was completely... Uh, done when I sold it the first time, or at least what I what I thought of as as done. Uh, when I got it back and we redid it the second time, we repainted a bunch of the interior pieces. Went with a satin uh, finish as opposed to gloss. Just to, it really, it's something so simple, but it uh-huh. really tied the interior together. Um, and then and we did you know small things that like seat belts. We did matching tan seat belts. Um, you know, the, the piece of trim that's on what would be the passenger side airbag that you can kind of see there right is now. a piece. Yeah. A piece from the same 66 Impala. Um, that's the steering wheels out of. And that it, it's just something a, a little small touches like that. Um, seat billet seat levers, you know, that recline the seat that you can't even sure. see when the door is closed. Um, the little small touches like that. I really uh, wanted to bring the full interior together. Yeah, pretty cool. And then how ironic, you know, a few years later, you got Cliff rolling in his Colorado, and then you got Phil behind you. I mean, that's got to be an epic moment for you. They're in many Nats at, of course, Maggie Valley, North Carolina, one of our favorite shows. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Cliff and I are are good friends. Um, We've been, you know, building these trucks together for years. And just being able to roll with all my friends, you know, if you look down the the left side row, it's a bunch of low rollers guys. You see Phil and then Paco. And I think Tommy is behind him. And then on the right is the East coast minis crew, which, you know, we see a lot of being up here and we're just all, uh, you know, great friends and to be able to roll down, down the strip. Um, it's just, it's always the highlight of my year. Oh yeah. And then here, ironically enough, after you sell it in the other version and it's back and it's kind of redone, you got the kids, the kiddos kind of in the truck. That was their, their playpen. Uh, when, yeah. when I'm in the garage, you know, I, I work uh, out of my house and the, my garage is, is my office. Um, my, my daughters would, would come out and they'd want to sit in the truck and, and watch Bluey and, on, on the TV and hang out. And I'm always, you know, more than, more than happy to oblige them in that. Yeah, that's pretty cool stuff. Now, something else that was intriguing to me, you know, when I slapped hands with you originally in Maggie Valley, North Carolina at Mini Nats, was the bed. Now, I noticed this bed floor, being a big movie fan, being a big Spielberg fan, and it's funny because I think we connected and I mentioned Jaws Daily and, yep. you know, some of the stuff that I'm not the biggest Jaws fan by any means, but I know there's a huge cult following. There's a, a great fan base. Nobody really complains about even some of the sequels that maybe aren't people's favorites, there's just everybody loves Jaws. What was the tie-in here? Um, the, and by the way, the, um, this I've learned a lot about this photo, the original person that had taken it and, and the person swimming. I think she was the first victim mm-hmm. in the film. Uh, I'll have to send you a photo because my buddy sent me a behind-the-scenes photo oh, from cool. the day that they were filming, and it has her in it oh, um, awesome. on the beach. But talk to us a little bit about this so I can stop yapping. <laughs> Like I like I you know said before, I'm not a, a builder. I don't weld. I don't fabricate. I don't paint. I wish I had those skills. Um, but what I do do is graphic design. I, I work with printing uh, materials. So I wanted something, a piece of me in, in the truck. I wanted something that I actually felt like I contributed. So I you know I had made a wood bed floor um, with my dad a few years ago. And it, it just never sat right. It was made out of two by fours. It was kind of clunky. It, it looked cool, but it was impossible to get in and out of the truck. So I went, you know, for this, I went to Home Depot and I bought boards and I photographed them in high resolution. And then I stitched them all back together in Photoshop so that each one of these pieces of wood is an individual. You won't find the same piece of wood um, throughout this uh, piece. And then I added in the Jaws theme just for something fun to do. I, I love Jaws. Cool. I think it's one of my favorite movies. Um, oh, yeah. If you look under the hood, 
of the truck of the truck I had six sharks airbrushed to represent myself my wife and our our four kids um and this cool. was just a, I, I wanted a piece of me to be in the truck yeah very cool and you can see another photo here for the the viewers that are on YouTube these are some of the photos that we shared are on screen here a few minutes ago um, showing some of the wild paint and uh, there's another photo of your daughter this was a cool photo that I really liked because in Florida, you know, it's flat for the most part. And you know, this to me, again, was probably you cruising around, but just a little bit different landscape. I was like, man, dude, really taking this one in. This is literally uh, a half a mile from my house. I live kind of not not really out in the country, but a little bit out there. Um, there there's in a- Del- is it Delaware? I'm in Maryland. Yeah, Maryland. I'm in- that's right. Okay. I, I keep wanting to say Delaware because of Phil. Yeah, that's where the majority of uh, low rollers is out of. Um, but me and a couple guys are in Harford County in Maryland. Now, how far are how far are you from Felber? Uh, from Felber, I'm probably an hour and a half. Excellent. Yeah. So, so here you see Phil cruising with you, and uh, just another great moment. Yeah, I mean that was uh, the first year that I, I had the truck back. You see, it's on the the 22 inch black rhinos. Um, and I think Brandon Burrell is as they're hollering at I Phil. I think that is Brandon. Yep, and we're just uh, out, out for a cruise around Maggie Valley. We know that's Brandon because of the shoes, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and then there's you and Cliff. Again, we always love Cliff's. Cliff's was on a Hamburg Weekend Wear shirt. Yep. East Coast Minis. Now, the highlight of any mini trucker up until probably the newer school, the younger, younger age, because they may not get – to see it as much, but now they're going to have another opportunity with May Truck coming back. Uh, Custom Trucks Mag is obviously in Japan, and to me, for you to be able to get this feature and it land on the cover was amazing. My understanding was that you and Phil shot it together, right? Uh, absolutely. Uh, Chuck Healy had reached out um, and asked for pictures from Mini Nats for to send over to Shingo. Um, for that issue of Custom Trucks Magazine. And we sent it over and, you know, we we got to talking and I, you know, had communicated back and forth with Shingo and he asked me about pictures of the truck, uh, of, of the canyon. And I said, sure, I, you know, I'd be happy to shoot it. Um, but I could not get the colors to come out the way I wanted. I wasn't hitting the light right. Um, so I, you know, asked Phil if he would help me shoot it. And, you know, being... One, a, an amazing photographer, and two, one of my best friends. Um, he was gracious enough to help me out, and we met up and went out to this spot where you're seeing in Delaware, right on the water. Um, you can see the the power plant across the water. That's actually in New Jersey. So you Damn. can see it's um, just a, a beautiful spot that he knew about. I really wanted to be shot um, with the Jaws theme, you know, with the sharks on the water. And he Very knew cool. where to go, um, set it up, and, and we banged out a, a amazing photo shoot. And I couldn't be more um, proud of, of the work that that he did. And um, I have pictures, you know, hanging up all around me, and uh, just can't say thank you to him enough. Yeah, and shout out to Phil. You know, I get a chance to talk. You know, we catch up maybe once a month or so, and he's just such a good dude and good family guy. But you know, loves mini trucks, and you know, he's been around forever uh maybe about 100 years or so but <laughs> we love you phil now again this is the photo on the left showing the custom trucks mag this was a uh, volume number 42 issue august 2022 and then dude this was a lot of fun because i didn't i didn't ride a lot with a lot of people just because i'm usually there on the sidelines to get my videos that i want for the channel but what was cool is i said man i want to i want to get a ride with you and we got a chance to kind of connect a few minutes and Bro, I listen to Yacht Rock just like you do. And remember all the awesome songs. We, you know, yep. if you're on Spotify, you look up Yacht Rock. Listen, you can say what you want, younger kinfolk. But I tell you, Matt and I, uh, man, it's like we could put this music on, whether I'm on the water or, in this case, cruising in a Colorado canyon, if you will. Man, we just had a blast. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, get some some Steely Dan, some you know Chuck Mangione, uh, Bobby Caldwell, and just – you know, you can turn it up as loud as you possibly can, and you're not going to offend anyone. Yep. People will, will will cruise up next to you, windows down. 
you know, you catch people singing along to your music. That, that's one of the reasons I love it. I can put my kids in there and I'm not worried about uh, offending. I love absolutely every kind of music. I love, you know, rap, hip hop, you know, angry, screaming, emo music, whatever it is, show tunes. I don't care. But when you put on Yacht Rock, everybody's happy. Oh, yeah. I love it. Now, um, I wanted to kind of pause for a minute and just kind of give you an opportunity. I know you mentioned some of the people that helped you with, and you're probably not going to be able to rattle them all off, but I'm sure there's a couple key people. When you think of the chassis, how the truck came together when it was green, you know, you flip the script, you get the same truck back. You know, you had me thrown off when we were chatting before when, you know, you're talking about the Colorado and Canyon because you kind of almost have the two versions of it in your mind. But what were some of the, you know, any other people you want to mention, Matt? Oh, let's think. You know, build, building the frame, John Shepard, I, I can't thank him enough. He was the man when it came to, you know, I, I, I dropped it off stock and picked it up body dropped, and it drove absolutely fantastic for for years. Um, Mike Bischoff was the original painter, did a fantastic job on that green, um, really came through with the, the custom uh, checkerboard under the uh, under the hood on the wheel tubs. Um, Brad Wurzbacker of, at the time, it was Driven Fabrication and Upholstery. Um, now Brad owns a shop called Stitched Interiors. He does um, amazing interior work fabrication. Um, and really, he was responsible for the first half uh, of the upholstery and then did all the sound work when we got it back the second time. Um, all the stereo stuff. Uh-huh. Repainting it the second time was uh, Travis Soper and Chuck Buckler. Chuck did the amazing airbrush work uh, that you see under the hood. I'll have to send you a picture of that. Those sharks, you know, literally come alive. Um, I my One of my, another great friend, Kenny Frank, every time I have an issue, I, I call Ken, and he's mechanically inclined, mini trucker to the core, has a beautiful convertible S10, um, you know, just a, a great, great friend all around. I'm so sorry because I'm sure I'm forgetting uh, other people that helped. You know, everyone in the club, low rollers, great. Um, my wife, my parents, you know, Alf and I would drop the truck off states away and my parents, you know, would would drive me home. Um, God, first and foremost, nothing. Yeah, I was going to say you're a man of faith. and Sorry. Yep. That's not sorry. Um, nothing is possible without him. Yep. A hundred percent, dude. The, the thing I want to give a shout out to is, uh, I know you mentioned Sh- Shingo, uh, but also Mikado. I want to shout out because we and Chuck Healy just had texted me earlier with a couple issues that I had been hoping to get from him. Nice. I absolutely love the magazine that's over your right shoulder and, you know, the custom trucks mag, it's too bad that it's not better distribution in the U.S., but Chuck Healy is our plug. I know there's a couple yep. guys. DJ, I think, is the other guy. There's a couple plugs out there. But, you know, congratulations, because to be able to kind of go international with it, I know it's not always easy. It's a little. It's going to be a little easier now for minis. But, you know, for your truck to run in the one version and street trucks and then this one to get the cover, I know it had to have been a good feeling. How do you then decide that you're going to let this epic truck that you've had for so long, kind of a part of the family, if you will, for those that don't know the truck was sold, how do you go about those emotions to go, hey, I'm going to let it go? Um, the truck, truly, you're, you're absolutely correct. The truck was a, was a member of the family. I had the truck longer than I've known my wife. Um, so my original goal when I dropped the truck off to John Shepard was I said I wanted to go on the, I wanted to get a cover of a magazine. That was at the time that was the the epitome and to me that's still, you know, the epitome of where you can be. Um and once I I felt, you know, I when I bought it back I felt I had unfinished business and that completed that chapter. When you know Shingo told me that it was going to run on the cover, I, I I said okay, that is exactly where I wanted to be. That's where I wanted to take it. And I was, you know, wrestled with back and forth what I was going to do, put it away, build something new. Um, and I realized I was completely at peace w- with selling it. Okay. Got it. And when you drove it to Mini Nats that year, not trailer, when you drove it down, 
if I remember correctly, you had struck a deal with the guy that you know because I think you had a very fair price on it, in my opinion. Uh, and you end up selling it. You do a handshake type deal, right? Keep me honest. And but you say, "Hey, man, I got one clause, <laughs> right?" Yes. Uh, I, I worked out a deal with a guy named Matt Ware who owns the truck now. Um, and I said, you know, we could do whatever you want. He said he, you know, had wanted it for a while. He had been messaging me for a few months. Um, and then, you know, he, he came upon an opportunity to, to buy the truck. I said, great. Wait a second. It's April. I want to drive the truck to mini Nats. And he said, okay, but I don't want you to sell it to someone else at mini Nats. He sent me a deposit. I said, that's great. The truck is yours. I will put no more than I think fourteen thousand mi- or fourteen hundred miles on it because that's the distance it is from here to Mini Nats and back. And, and a said, couple I'm times up and down the like, you know yep. what I mean. <laughs> and uh, he said that's you know that's great. And I said as long as you know everything drives good down there and there are no issues, you know the truck will be yours uh, as soon as I get back. And sure enough, bulletproof chassis, just all the way down. All the way back, eighty miles an hour, cruise control. It 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 was a beautiful last ride. Good, good. Now, as a mini trucker, you, you know, many of us don't say, you know, we don't we don't really wake up and go, hey, we're just going to kind of get out the game and we're going to quit what we're doing. <laughs> you you end up deciding, and and we all knew that you had something in you, kind of up your sleeve, so to speak. Uh, talk to us a little bit about Project Boombox. All right. Project Boombox is a 1988 Toyota 4Runner that I've been planning out uh, for a little while. I actually picked this up from a guy in Virginia, a guy named Kenny Gass, uh, Sunset, Virginia, who had it and was, was I think he's working on finishing up his uh, pole barn, his shop. So he was, you know, looking to unload some of his projects. He's got a handful of cool trucks. And I saw this and I I loved it. I wanted something that was going to be completely different. I was looking at international harvesters. I was looking at, um, you know, just searching rare trucks. And the fact that they did not make a two wheel drive version of this forerunner, 84 to 88, 89, uh, with the liftoff back, you know, they're less than a handful of them built. And that has a giant appeal to me. Um, that, that I'm going to build something that's not going to be every other truck in the field. Yeah, so, no doubt. And I know can do is back. We want to give a huge shout yeah, out to them. I, I need to get uh Harvey on, oh, uh, I know cool. in kind of conjunction, I think even through Bob Grant and whatnot, but can do is back. You got AVS. They helped me on my S 10 slam specialties via air performance wheels, JL audio and G, uh, GS skater, uh, Gator step, Star. Gator step. Now, my understanding was we can see on the back for those that are watching this on YouTube. If if not, um, you you know these obviously have the roll down back window. It's got little rollers on the back um, for the club that Matt is in. Matt, my understanding was keep me honest because I haven't been on Facebook as much these days. You had acquired this vehicle, but didn't you run into a challenge with it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I originally um, was you know going to go through a shop in Pennsylvania to. Uh, bag and body drop the truck, get the frame all squared away. Um, the the owner of the shop was driving it to um, the store, and an old lady ran a red light and smashed the front end. Oh, so up. it wasn't you driving it? No, it was actually I was on my first day of vacation. Oh my god! Um, and I get a call and saying, "Old lady ran a red light. Truck got you know banged up Whacked. a little bit." So. That, you know, just kind of pushed the process back a little bit. Um, But uh, we power through. We move forward. Right now, you can see there the the shop or the trucks at uh, Chad Gill, uh, NC Maryland's shop, Metro Collision. He's doing fantastic work on the front end, getting it back together, uh, updating the grill and bumper to a 94 Forerunner. Um, I was able to pull all the parts locally off of marketplace um and he's getting that front end back together and i'm actually going to drive it down to mini nats this year and dylan daniel uh of jadon fab and um jamie tiffany are going to take it and lay it out for me excellent 
Excellent. Yeah, you can see Jade on Fab there as well. Metro Collision LLC on the rendering. Uh, this is obviously your daughter. Let's see here. Checking it out. The oh yeah, <laughs> yes that uh, that was the first day I got it when she didn't know what it was. She's like, Dad, it's rusty. It's got holes. What are we doing? <laughs> I am not playing in this thing. It's what she's thinking. <laughs> and here's Crazy Dad with the beard cruising down the street in his Toyota. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, right. just uh, can't can't wait to to get that back or, or you know get that rolling. And I'm really excited to build another truck that I, I think I want to take even further than I took the Canyon. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now, one thing that you had told me in the past is. And th this, I think, echoes because, you know, many of us, many truckers, you know, we, you know, we hear of people uh, back in the day. I remember, you know, you want to get all this stuff done and it's like, you know, credit cards and, you know, you get into debt and things like that. My understanding, though, is like you've always saved your pennies, so to speak, <laughs> and everything that you've been able to do up to this point. Just, you know, you kind of put your business out there and you said, hey, Jay, I've been able to kind of do this without going into debt. I'm living my dream, doing what I love. And um, I think that's a, a true testament that this stuff can be done in a way that people aren't going into crazy debt. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's a big philosophy of mine. I don't own a credit card. Uh, if I can't afford it, I don't need it. I, I'll pick a penny up off the ground. I will you know, reuse the same cup because a refill at 7-Eleven is $1. five, whereas a new cup is two fifty. I Maybe I'm cheap, but if I can, you know, a penny saved is a penny earned. Yep. So who said that? <laughs> Abe Lincoln? No, I don't I think know. it was Ben Franklin. That's close enough. Abe there Lincoln's on the penny, so that's... Right, exactly. <laughs> there you go. I'll give you a tick mark. You know, Mike doesn't get one now. <laughs> but no, that, that that's that's a true testament. And you think about, you know, you said this earlier about hot rods, and, you know, you even it bled over to mini trucks. You know, stuff is not cheap these days, especially good work. I mean, paint work is expensive, mm -hmm. collision work, interior, you know, fab work. I mean, you know this because you're getting ready to go through it, dare I say again. But I think, you know, even with the four girls, right, and your awesome wife... I, well, what? No, do you have three? I have two boys, two girls. Two boys, two girls. Okay, so luckily it's not all girls because my friend's got oh. four. <laughs> he, my friend's got four daughters. Oh, great! And then his wife. I'm but, sorry. Uh, right, <laughs> but but I think like you're able to balance all of that, you know, and I think that's a key thing. And even me looking back on things and going, you know, sometimes, you know, living outside our means, or I'll speak for myself, or buying stuff I just don't always need. I think it's refreshing to hear someone that says, you know what, if I don't need something, I don't buy it. Uh, maybe you don't take an extra trip because you go, hey, man, I want to funnel some funds over here or this and that. So certainly I think that's a very positive take. Yeah, I mean, we also we, I, we work very hard between my, well, my wife and myself. Um, we both have full time day jobs. We both have side gigs and we run a bookstore out of our house um, that. If for any female listeners listening or your guys with wives, you know, our bookstore is all young adult books that uh, are blowing up right now. Excellent. Very cool. Now, something else I want to do is I want to share one more one more time, I think, here um, as we kind of wind down with some of the content. Now, another thing, you know, you've mentioned this, and I think this is a good, a good period to, or a good point to bring up. Like, for instance, with flyers and things like that, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, or there's certain things like, you know, I'm going to show some of the stuff that you've shared um, with us here. Uh, they could reach out to you. I mean, do you do things? I mean, kind of just give us a quick. Other than what they're seeing here, are there a few other things you would want to promo for yourself? Yeah, I mean, we do uh, all types of event flyers through, you know, Downtime Designs. I also run a small shop called Car Show Supply. We do everything from awards um, to yard signs, um, like anything that you would need to either promote your event or um, really help help grow and support your sponsors. Oh yeah, we're seeing Camp and Drag here. One of our that hasn't favorites. been seen yet, so we're gonna. Oh. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's cool. it hasn't been released yet. Oh crap! Okay, no, you're good. But, but I saw a Lincoln on there, so I'm good. <laughs> Suicide rear doors. Now, 
uh, keep me honest, I use some unconventional tools to kind of accomplish what I'm looking to do. But, you know, when you went to school and things like that, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming, do you use Adobe a lot or do you use other stuff? Yeah, I know. I, I live in Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And it seems like, you know, that I remember when I was younger, I thought Adobe was just um, – uh, PDF reader, you know, <laughs> and it's, you kind of get older and you realize it's not, but also there's also some art in here that you've, that you've kind of shared. And my understanding is this is just kind of a passion thing for you that falls under that umbrella that you've been talking about. Uh, absolutely. When I, you know, I got into my garage and I Wait, realized can we share this one. Yes. That actually dropped today. Okay. Um, good, good, good. Just making sure. So I, I got in my garage and I was under the hood and I was busting knuckles and I'm coming out bleeding. And I realized that this is not for me. I, I, ha I, you know, we built this, this nice you know, garage shop behind my house that I absolutely love, but working on cars, I'm not good at it and I don't enjoy it. It, it was not fun for me. So I, I've always loved just, just painting and drawing and airbrush and all, all the different creation aspects. And that's what I miss in my daily job using Photoshop and Illustrator. I missed the handwork that I was doing in college. Um, so I just picked up a brush again just to see, you know, what what, what I could do. And I started painting uh, old wooden mechanics creepers. And sure enough, I've been, you know, I, I've met with some success with it, not even selling them, but just in creating pieces that I like. And creating cool. pieces that other people seem to enjoy. Um, last year, I was able to donate this piece here uh, to the Spread in the Love auction at Mini Nats. And uh, I want to say, I, I believe it, it I, I know it's a charity auction, so believe me, I want people to go, go nuts for it. But it, it sold for a, a very large amount of money that I couldn't, I cried because I couldn't believe how much money uh, was, wow. was spent on this. Um, so I was blessed enough to be able to do another one for this coming year, which um, Sean Rose just dropped today. Excellent. And that's Two Ballistic? Uh, yes, that's the new one for Two Ballistic. There you go. And Matt Reynolds of Charm City Upholstery, uh, actually, who did the interior so of Two Ballistic. Did the headrest of the same exact materials that you'll find in the truck, dude? You know Randy's gonna have to like take a loan <laughs> out. You know what I mean? I, Just that, in Randy. That's that's up to him. I, right. I hope it does as well as the last one did. Randy's packing heat now. He might be going around the whole <laughs> crowd in the beginning, going, "Hey, come on, Randy. We can't have any kind of strong arm properties here." But <laughs> but that's so cool, uh, Matt. Charm City Upholstery is such a such a great job there um, with that piece there. Again, obviously, I've seen Two Ballistic in person many times, and uh, it just looks so awesome. That whole team did such a great job on that. And want to give it up for David and uh, Sean, you know, with Spreading the Love. I know Sean Rose has really kind of fallen into, you know, you talk about the stuff you loved or the things you didn't and where you kind of, uh, you know, your path took you, you know, look at Sean Rose and all the success. And again, I know David's Wonderful. kind of his right hand guy there and, and they're both in this photo, but, um, uh, so awesome. And, and it's cool. You know, my friend Thad, at, at, uh, yeah. icon signs, you know, he's a good guy. You know, there's guys yeah. like you out there that are doing these very cool things and you're doing it for the love of the scene. You're doing it for the charity side of it. You're doing it. Cause like you said, I mean, art is a thing. I, I'm not a good artist, but I understand like people love to paint. People love to create stuff. And if, if you don't have that in you, you obviously maybe don't get that. But I certainly understand that even though I couldn't draw a stick figure, <laughs> uh, I, I know you would appreciate that. So it, it's but, something um, I just feel, feel called to do and I'm blessed to be able to do it. Yeah. So uh, show your shirt there. It's downtime designs on yes. Instagram uh, and Facebook. You can look up Matt Hodgson, H O D S O N. H O D G S O N. -E -S -S -E -S -E -S Matt Hodgson. Um, the Colorado, you know, the from the S10 to now, of course, the Toyota, a uh, forerunner, technically, right? Forerunner. Yep. Um, definitely so much. I know you um, give any other shout outs or anything that we may have missed because I know you probably had a lot of things 
on your mind, and I know sometimes um, I'll kind of wrap these up quick. Uh, I'm looking at my notes as well. Um, and to Summer Bash, you mentioned that earlier, you know, huge tip of the cap. Uh, while you're thinking of anything else that you want to maybe say, a uh, huge tip of the cap to low rollers. I tell Phil all the time, I, I really kick myself for never making it to that event. And I do believe that event and or low rollers will hopefully receive eventually, you know, I think th- they're a club that deserves, you know, a mini truck uh, Hall of Fame status. And, and obviously that, that would be potentially in the future. We talked about Phil Fowler and how much we love him. How can you not love uh, Phil? Yeah, we talked that. about Yacht Rock. Um, the rare, uh, sliding rag top. We hit upon that obviously, which was cool. Uh, jaws real quick. Are, is there any one moment you could think back? Were you a kid when you saw it and you loved it? I honestly, I don't remember ever loving it outside of the last 10 years. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I was just kind of curious on that. Now, again, I'm sure you had a lot of thoughts, so I wanted to give you an extra minute there. Is you know, Are there any other shout-outs or maybe any other pieces of the story that you maybe wanted p- t- to mention today? Uh, I kind of looked through my notes, and I think for the most part I got most of what I wanted to chat about with you. Um, I, I know one thing that I just want to touch on is the Northeast in general. Um, we yeah. have – you know, we're in a real – strange segment where six months out of the year, it's cold. Nobody wants to leave their house. Um, you know, and we have lost a lot of great events over the years. There were, you know, there were years back when I was going to 15, 20 events a year. And I know life has changed for everyone. Lord knows with four kids and a wife, I'm not getting out to that many events a year, um, anymore, but we've just lost so many events, but I want to give a shout out to everyone up here from, you know, Maryland, all, all the way up to, to Maine and, and Connecticut and then, you know, those guys that we still, we're still here there. I know we're not seeing each other like we were years ago, but I want all, you know, everyone out there that I used to hang out with weekend in weekend out to know that we are still here. We're still mini trucking strong uh, in, in the Northeast. Yeah, for real. And Something that I know we talked about in the past uh, real quick is, you know, I know that when you early on in your kind of career and your scene history, you also went to 15 plus events a year and you took a lot of photos. And that was the gateway for a lot of other people. If you think about how many people you probably got involved, right, from people that are like following the stuff you were doing and hitting all these shows. Um, So tip of the cap to you for that, because, again, that's kind of the gateway for many of us clicking off photos finding what we like and those type of things. I also want to give a huge shout out. I know you guys and your pocket of, of kinfolk there may not all know Jeff Gaudet. Um, Jeff Gaudet's doing that, that event, the Nor'easter and he's certainly passionate. You know, maybe he's not a name that everybody knows from back in the day, but I know that he's really trying to kind of put the flag in the ground and say, Hey, up in their region, which I know is a, is a long drive for many people, but the Nor'easter, I think, is August. I talked to him the other day. We're going to do something to kind of promo that. But certainly, like you said, the passion runs deep, and we know the Northeast is not to be played with. Kind of like the Wu-Tang. There ain't, uh, they ain't uh, anything to F with. And, um, <laughs> More for the kids. You know, More for the kids. Exactly. Hey, ODB said it, Wu-Tang's for the kids, for the children. <laughs> but – the, the I think the key thing is is that you know, no matter if it's Pacific Northwest, the Dirty South, the Northeast, you know the West Coast, maybe third course third coast born, and Texas, you know everybody's trying to kind of hold it down. But you'd, you'd be hard pressed to find a tighter knit group of kinfolk up in your region. Uh, so tip of the cap to everybody, and even some of the guys that haven't maybe I haven't seen around in a while. I know shout out to all the Severn New York guys. You know they've been traveling a lot, so it's cool to see them and Al and everyone. So, um, you know, good people. But yeah, I mean that, that that that's a good. I think that's a good wrap up there, man. That, that was awesome. Anything else, man? Uh, no, just uh, again, thank you to my my wife and the kids and. My wife enables me to go out and do these things and allows me to spend time in the garage. And um, I just couldn't do any of this without her love and support. Real deal. Uh, the last couple things. Number one is if people need to get a hold of you, maybe they want some light design work or anything you do, even heavy design work or the car show supplies and, and kind of that whole facet of it. What's the best way for people to hit you up? Um, on, on Facebook is easiest or 
downtime designs at gmail.com. Uh, yeah, we'll, down we'll, spelled okay. out time altogether designs with an S. Yes, sir. Okay, now I usually don't do this. Don't get don't get too weirded out. I'm gonna <laughs> keep everything on here. Uh, today is uh, Rad Day. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, this is a um, uh, this is a piece that uh, uh, somebody did in the Rad community, which is a mashup between <laughs> ET and Rad, which we know that that wasn't a real thing, but. <laughs> Steven Spielberg's directed Jaws, right? Yes, sir. That's awesome. That's just a little bit of the crap that I'm into, right? <laughs> Stuff I spend too much money oh, on. I, but... I, I watched Red earlier today, so I understand. Excellent, dude. So you get another tick mark in your binder, man. There we go. Uh, give a shout out one more time to the wife and kids. All right. Thank you, Amber, um, Brady, Charlie, Olivia, Evelyn. Love you guys. Yeah, and... Um, I, I know I keep saying the last thing. Uh, you also put on events over the course of time, which I thought was cool. Y- you've definitely, uh, you know, had your piece of kind of building the trucks, shooting the trucks, photography wise, helping put on the events, helping kind of build that region up a little bit. And again, it was cool to hear you give a huge shout out to the Northeast man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I know we you know, we touched on it real quick. I you know shot for for sport truck. For a few years before that, I had my own website, dragforthecamera.com, when when Dragon was a huge thing. Um, and, yeah, just trying to – I've been trying to bring people together through a uh, small event, Tacos and Tailgates, um, which it's just literally come hang out in the parking lot and eat tacos at a local restaurant. It, it's in Bel Air, Maryland this year. It's uh, first weekend in October. Um, just always, always a good time. Come out, hang out. It is – you know, there's nothing to do but hang out. There, oh, there's yeah. no special event. There's no anything. Just come hang out, eat tacos, and just being be together. Be oh yeah, hanging out. What more do you need? Tacos and mini trucks, dude. That's it. Right? Maybe a little bit of family camaraderie with the kin folks, slapping some hands. Makes life, life worth living. Life is good, Matt. I can't thank you. Enough for sitting down with our lifestyle podcast a title sponsor, Scraping the Coast. Every about third week in the month of June in Biloxi, we hope that everybody can join us out there. Much love to Scraping the Coast. But Matt, we cannot thank you enough for just kind of sitting down with us, telling us a little bit of your history, and really representing. Uh, we know there's a lot of good kinfolk in the Northeast, but thanks for helping rep today on OLP for the Northeast. No, thank you so much, Jason. I truly appreciate it. I would say rock on, but I'm going to say yacht rock on. Yacht rock on. (laughs) My man, brother. It's good seeing you. You too. Thank you. 